Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Hallelujah. You see, let, let me tell you something. Listen to me. The higher you rise in God and in life, you will see how much God does not need you. The higher you rise, you will learn that it is a privilege to be part of God's program. I am being aware every day that God can do without me. It's, it's, not, it's not a motivation, it's the truth. I now understand why David said, what is man? What is man? If you can make a donkey speak, why should man be the one speaking for you? What is man that thou art mindful of? As you begin to see the faithfulness of God in your life, you will get to a point where you will know, I didn't pray for this. This one is not fasting. This one didn't come by study. How it came, I don't understand. And you just say, Lord, let, let, let your name be glorified. Jesus, you be lifted Jesus Christ 
Hallelujah. The reason why many people do not experience consistent increase is because we get to points in our lives where we become embarrassed to let men know that God is still the doer. When you are starting, it's obvious because you don't have any notable results. It's easy to say it is God. But a time comes when men say you are the doer and you will first say I'm not the doer but later on you will be tempted to say but come to think of it. Is it not my power and the might of my hand? That is the foolishness that can throw a man from any height. It took a king and turned a king into a beast. That whoever can be stupid enough to roll before God, you will never roll before men. I tell you this. That you can lose your dignity before God to say, Lord, I am nothing old. It's not, you are not condemning yourself. It's a recognition. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before. Help me. I cast my crown before. The highest royal I am mountain before. I am mountain before the majesty of the king of kings, king of kings before. said my peace I give you there are many things in the Bible that God gave man without his request one of it is his peace he said this type of peace the world cannot give it I speak peace to every heaviness peace to every worry peace to every stress in the name of Jesus I speak peace to every storm in your life I want you to know that God is alive and God is in control. Peace to your spirit. Let every heaviness, let every depression give way. The peace of the Lord garrisons your heart tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please be seated. Please be seated. Sometimes we just get lost in worship. These extended moments of worship are very, very powerful because 
many things happen in worship i was preparing to minister a program it was a worship program and while i was meditating the lord gave me a revelation about the woman with the alabaster box and the lord told me that perfume is not the only thing you can put in an alabaster box whatever you do not want to see you can carry it and put it in that box and take it to him you can put your pain in the box you can put your worries in the box because everything presented in that box never returns to you and so it's not only your crown that you give you can put your pain you can put the worries and break it before him and say lord know what to do with it i have handed this over to you hallelujah it's a powerful thing to really be in the presence of god my prayer for us is that we continue to value his presence that we get to a point where we begin to see the relevance by every standard and from every dimension to see the relevance the profitability of dwelling in his presence hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord it's good to be back home let's get to the word i'm happy to be back it's been a very stressful month already and we bless the name of the lord for the privilege to take his life and his word around the nations let the name of the lord be glorified in jesus name we thank god for the remarkable things to you be all the glory in the name of jesus the lord put what i'm about to teach you in my heart since last month I was just waiting to allow the set time to just discuss it with us. Everyone's, and again, the Spirit of the Lord, Pastor Shago, it's good to see you again. God bless you. Thank you. Everyone's, and again, the Lord would come to check our level of spiritual progress. You see, believers are likened to a house that is being built. The Bible says we all as living stones that we are being built into a spiritual house and it is the responsibility of the Holy Spirit to check and meticulously vet the construction to make sure not only that the house is built well but that everything that should be captured inside that house is well represented are we together so god would come every once and again to our lives and find out the areas where the testimony of jesus is not yet established and he will build us up this is why it is powerful to walk with the holy spirit if you really walk with the holy spirit your life will be complete and balanced if you see him building you in a dimension and you see that there is a lopsidedness you just be patient with him very soon he will come and pick up that side and you become an exceptional trophy very balanced very accurate One of the things about dominion, I've been looking at this and even in my external ministrations, I've been talking about it, that we need to understand the dominion systems of the kingdom. We need to understand, that, that's not what I'm talking about, but that if the saints, remember the Bible says that we receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and then he says by them we reign in life it is god's desire that the church enters her glorious destiny experientially and that will only happen when dominion is established are we together now i told you that it is against the law of the spirit for a man to glorify himself so you will lift another who brings you glory you don't glorify yourself in the spirit so it is the son that brings glory to the father and then the church the ecclesia in partnership with the holy spirit glorifies the son 
but then how is the church now glorified are we together now it is in subjecting principalities and powers and the elements of this system bringing them to the obedience of Christ that is how the glory of the church the bride is seen so Jesus glorifies the father the church in partnership with the Holy Spirit glorifies the son then the dominion of the church within this sphere of God's kingdom is how the church is glorified are we together now so it matters to God that the church that we not only continue to learn and grow and fall down and stand up but that we sustain the intelligence and the empowerment two important things the intelligence and the empowerment to rise to a point where experientially the church of the Lord Jesus Christ will not only advance in terms of communicating the gospel of the kingdom but that we get to a point where the dominion of the church is recognized across the sociological strata of human existence and will continue to strive to make this happen in the name of Jesus and I've taught us you know different messages put together that there are systems for dominion please listen carefully there are many indices that you put together to measure dominion the ability to exact sovereign control over a territory and one of it at random in no particular order is influence i've taught us the power of influence that kingdom advance does not just happen through evangelism alone but through influence say influence i'm teaching you now say influence influence is very important and believers must be mentored and cultured to see the relevance of kingdom influence influence is the ability to cause men to buy into your values to buy into your ideologies to buy into your perspectives about god and life without using force or cruelty it's called influence are we together now that you get to a point where you can cause a territory to value what you value to prioritize what you prioritize like ruth told naomi your god will be my god your people will be my people so you get to a point where you exert a level of pressure on people to bend and subscribe to your values and your ideologies but you do not use force you do not use cruelty you use something called inspiration influence thrives on inspiration the flawlessness of your results compelling people to see the excellency of modeling their lives after the results that they seek which they see in your life the church will never be able to do much if we ignore influence because you see in this world that we live in at every given point someone is influencing you and you are influencing another person are we together now yes if we ever frown at the decadence that we see in our society the decadence did not come by personal indoctrinations it came by using certain people who are called gatekeepers of certain mountains to demonstrate and market that value so strong that an entire territory within a short period of time can buy into that conviction are we together now yes nobody just sits down for instance and loves to be gay I'm just using as an example except that someone who is in a position that can inspire is empowered both by hell and the gatekeepers of this cosmos to market an ideology that would have been ugly if it were marketed by someone with no influence so usually the devil will find people who have um, they are inspiration worthy and then he will incorporate that flaw in their life so that they will sell that idea and we receive everything hook line and sinker because they stand in a position where they can influence our thinking the church needs to be influential remember the dream of king nebuchadnezzar that daniel interpreted 
Daniel said, I saw a stone that was not carved by human hands. He was interpreting the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, the head of gold, the chest and the breastplate of silver and all of that, that were representations of many kingdoms that will come. And then the feet that was mixed with clay and iron, a type of many systems incorporated in one and daniel said i saw a stone that was not carved by human hands it arose and crushed that kingdom then the stone became a mountain a stone became a mountain a strata of influence and then he says that a kingdom was given to the saints and that that kingdom cannot be destroyed and that kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and jesus now comes to say that kingdom is called the church he says i am the builder of it the rejected stone the chief cornerstone now becomes a mountain and becomes a kingdom a collection of people and an invincible force that will crush every kingdom the Bible said it. The king had the dream and Daniel interpreted it. And it will happen in the name of Jesus Christ. So we need influence. We need a lot of it. One of the other elements that we need to be able to exert dominion. I'm just giving us the foundation. So when we say we should walk in dominion it's not just a vague talk of authority no there are certain specifics that must be in place if the church is to dominate are we together one of it for instance is spiritual empowerment there cannot be true dominion until that individual is empowered the psalmist said i will lift up my eyes onto the hills and then he asks a question he said from whence cometh my help that means the issue of help is mandatory it's just that people outsource help from different dimensions others can outsource help from sorcery and witchcraft others can outsource help from education and um, our secular enlightenment others can outsource help from relationships and human connections and then the psalmist said for me oh, i can't speak for everybody but my help cometh from the lord the maker of the heavens and the earth are we together so it's established that nobody rises and commands dominion unassisted you must be assisted by a dimension that is beyond the three-dimensional realm so every time you see someone exerting dominion in any sphere of influence at all there is no need guessing whether that person has been assisted or not if at all you care to guess you will want to just guess the source of the assistance not that that person was assisted it is impossible to walk in dominion unassisted are we together men are helped to be great men are helped to be blessed if you ignore the spiritual assistance that we call empowerment god's token of his presence and might upon your life granting you access to possibilities that should not be affordable to you by human standards that's what it means to be empowered to be engraced with an energy with an ability that only God should have so that you command results that are not given to mere men and then the third is wealth there is no dominion without wealth it is true the wealth of the kingdom is an index that empowers the church to command dominion and when I talk of wealth, I'm not talking of just cars and houses. That's, 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 that's not wealth. That's just maybe a level of comfort. But that, that's not what we're talking about at all. We're talking of a dimension of divine supplies that can force any closed door that is shut by the economy of this world to be opened. Are we together now? These are the forces among others there are many others that must be engaged in our lives and corporately as a body 90 percent listen please 90 percent of the pursuits 
of men and women on earth today is an attempt to make a meaning out of their lives to make a meaning to try to put ends together so a father is rushing to get a job and you ask him sir why are you so busy and he tells you look i need to get um school fees for my children i need to pay rent i need to do this and that and there's a businessman running and i mean helter skelter you wake up in the morning and you see people run from morning till night and you ask them what are you looking for and some say survival some say we're making ends meet and so on and so forth and you know there's there seems to be that contention everywhere left right and center please listen very carefully you see if you follow the way of the Lord please listen to me the Bible says there is a way that seemed right unto a man it could be a way that has been established by philosophy and the pride of men I hope you know men are arrogant it's what God has had to put up with us for many decades the the pride of men in spite of our ignorance it's amazing how arrogant men are and then at the end we have to turn back and say Lord I need you how many times have people ignored God in the Bible based on whatever they think or they thought was an advantage and they were forced to return to a point where they would call upon his name and acknowledge him so when life defines a pathway for you to follow listen carefully just because a crowd is following that pathway does not mean that way is right are you listening to me now the courage to walk with god is what many people do not have because this system wields a level of pressure on you this is how it is done this is how we make money this is how we become famous this is how we do this and you know that the holy spirit is telling you there is a way i can route your life and destiny such that you will do much in in so short a time and have the time to lift up the name of the lord and glorify him you see let me tell you something the system that was designed by satan was designed by a lot of intelligence the system was so designed that you must lose certain things when you follow it one of the things you must lose is joy one of the things you must lose is peace one of the things you must lose is God one of the things you must lose is everything God gave you so you you move and take that path and check my peace is gone where did it go to and Satan says continue going and then you find out my joy is gone and then you find out my relationship with God is gone. The, 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 the progression was designed to strip you of everything divine. And to reward your giving away these valuable things, you get stipends that you call success. You call stipends the accolades of men. While they clap for you for getting A and B, you have lost the things that really matter. And after decades of moving in ignorance, you would turn back and find out you really didn't have anything. You were better off before you started following that path. Are we together now? Our world is full of very angry people. Look at the young people who are angry right now. They turn back and look at their lives. No money, no joy, no peace. You have children as if you should kill them. Are we together now because you don't know what to do with them the needs are much they bring PTA letter and you are angry you have a church you don't even know what to do it's not growing you go and copy a formula somewhere and say we must apply it this church must grow and you try it and nothing happens and you give your best and the members lash back at you and you turn and say God did you design this thing and God said I have no hand in this because Jesus said I am the way listen carefully that you shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk ye in it now but the challenge is this 
many believers do not have the fortitude to sit down and be correctly mentored to follow the path that will lead to life and power usually usually a combination i think of operations of darkness tampered with our pride the pride of men we hate being taught we want to show we know we we feel embarrassed when we are educated because it looks like it's an insult on our pedigree are we together now so usually we like suggestions but not to be taught and say look this way you are following is wrong let me tell you this i i say this with all humility i have watched people take steps and i already knew where they were going to end it's painful when you already know where a road is going and someone is still following it i have seen people take steps and make choices that i know the end of it is going to be disaster except the mercy of god intercepts somewhere in the way they are going to fail and they are going to fail woefully now this sounds like pride you see i've been saying this thing for many years i didn't just start saying it this system will never allow you serve god it's a promise i'm giving you you follow this system the world's way of doing things you will never live a meaningful life have you seen the rate at which people commit suicide someone would just hang himself and write a letter i hate life i was reading um the the online paper just today about a woman i think somewhere in nigeria who killed her husband killed the children and killed herself that's the way high blood pressure used to be sickness for old people but now you see teenagers having high blood pressure and you wonder what <laughs> excuse me what they are thinking about that's life for you and satan continues to manipulate the system to ensure number one that you never have time for god i hope you know that the number one attack of satan is your spiritual life listen to me carefully in that order when satan begins to launch an attack it doesn't matter where it comes from ultimately because if he can cut your ears away from the voice of god that's the supply of your life man shall not live by bread alone but by every word and if that word is cut away from you you have started dying even though alive every attack on your life has a way of routing to your spiritual life so the bible says we should be steadfast immovable are we together now to get to a point where you are solid that nothing will offend you that you will not find offense in god to say god i'm disappointed in you i will try another strategy i i i trusted you to do a and b in my life you have come to a point where your love for god is as solid as mount zion many people's spiritual lives have been attacked every day every time per second per second satan uses all the elements in this life poverty pain offense disappointment are we together delay all kinds of things and he keeps targeting your spiritual life and goodness is he getting at people rubbishing people so much you see everyone i'm trying to make ends meet um it's time for prayer prayer what please god is here let's 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 do this thing first and we wake up early in the morning and we sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow because that was not the formula assigned to bring us rest there remained a sabbath for the people of god but until you walk with the Holy Spirit, who is the Lord of the Sabbath, to be able to guide you and show you the systems you must access. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, men can find rest in experience. Do not allow the personal frustrations that you have faced on your journey to fulfillment and relevance make you believe that God is incapacitated. No. My life and your life can never be a perfect reflection of his capability. He doesn't bend to our standards. We must subscribe to conform to God's standard. 
if you are poor today is not a reflection of god's inability to bless if you are not influential today it's not a reflection of god's limitation are we together if you are not anointed to a notable dimension it's not a reflection of god's inability to reach you there is somewhere in that equation you either do not understand or you are engaging wrongly that's why we are here to learn to be taught to be guided to see that there is a path that truly leads to death not spiritual death physical death but there is a path that leads to life is god speaking to someone already and so i just want to press on an issue with us that i think god would have me talk to us on tonight um so that we can have the time to serve god I title it it's a very brief message my cup runneth over I want to share with you the dominion systems that God has put to help men activate the supplies of heaven I pray pray for me that God will grant me grace to finish on time because I really want us to pray I want us to spend a few minutes praying the greatest distraction i have seen in the lives of believers is this issue of our daily bread the issue of trying to make ends meet and the rate at which believers are being distracted by the worries and the cares especially as regards our needs there has to be a system to address it if not a time will come when on sunday churches will be empty a time will come when you will organize crusades and you will find people saying look I, I have four jobs because i'm trying to make ends meet i my my child's school fees has been increased to by times five and i have to make sure ends meet god please wait when i make it i can come to you and if you disturb me i'll come with a seed and sow it to you Psalm 23. Lord, may this message bless your body in the name of Jesus. This is how I read this scripture. If the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters verse 3 he restored my soul he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake uh-huh yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod thy staff they comfort me five thou preparest a table just leave that verse this is what we are dealing with tonight thou preparest a table not a sword thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies here is the miracle thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over may that be our testimony in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God that your cup will run over transgenerationally that you will get to a point where because of you it will be that you have brought light you have brought salvation and empowerment to your loved ones i believe that the greatest attack on the body of christ will come in the area of divine supplies supplies for kingdom advance it is no news that God wants us to be able to have the level of overflow and abundance. And this is not in some carnal, um, self-centered way. No, we are talking kingdom here. Are we together? That it is the will of God, please listen very carefully, to bring us to a point by his grace where we access the supplies of heaven that can afford us the opportunity listen carefully to be able to spend our lives by spending our time 
serving the Lord. Remember the teaching that I did here on time. Certain things about time that we need to learn. That all that you have in life is time. Are we together now? That means whatever you give your time to, you have invested part of your life to. Are we together now? Yes. That our lives are time dependent. And whatever you commit your time to, is what you have given your life to. And so Satan, knowing the value of time, has manipulated a system that compels the average person to commit most of his time on mundane pursuits so that we do not have time left to serve the purposes of the kingdom and advance the gospel and lift the name of the Lord. So it's not the issue of poverty or prosperity or abundance or lack. It's a fight for time. Satan is targeting your time, not your pocket. He's using your pocket to target your time because he knows that if he can create a system around your life where God is not prioritized, he has captured you. The time of the average believer is spent worrying is spent thinking of needs here and there and i want to tell you categorically it is not the will of god you will never be able to serve the purposes of god that way as a man of god it's impossible to have the time to settle down and prepare a quality sermon well researched with prayer to bless people when there are all kinds of concerns where will we get the fuel for the generator where are we going to rent the keyboard many people lie as if it doesn't matter it does matter when your landlord comes knocking at your door you will be surprised to see how it will influence your prayer life are we together now that says and have you ever been in a situation that gave you concern you lost appetite has that happened to someone that you sat down you are not sick or you are fine but there's a plate of food in front of you and you cannot eat because you are worrying you wake up in the night and you are stressed out are you not seeing that death is killing us give us psalm 112 this is god's idea of a man of a family that is a true representation of his of his abundance and his supplies it says praise ye the lord blessed is the man that feareth the lord take note one that man fears the lord number two he delighted greatly in his commands so that's the secret of that man that that man is blessed go back to verse one he is blessed because he fears the Lord and he delights greatly in his commands. Verse 2 says, His seed shall be mighty upon earth. And then he says, The generation of the upright. That means that the impact of that man transcends a generation. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Verse 3 says, Wealth and riches shall be where? Please talk to me believers that wealth and riches shall be in his house and in spite of that wealth and riches his righteousness endures now this is what you cannot get with satan if you ever get wealth and riches this way your righteousness will not endure because it will force you to dapple your hands in all kinds of things that by the time you are 10 years in that voyage you have lost so many things wealth and riches shall be in his house and in spite of it his righteousness endures the bible says that man is blessed he fears the lord and he delights greatly in his commands his seed his seed there is not just his children your seed is anything that comes out of you that his seed shall be mighty upon earth and then he says the generation of the upright shall be blessed wealth and riches shall be in his house and then he says his righteousness endures forever i have taught extensively 
on the systems of the kingdom that are allocated to bring supplies and to help believers to come into a point where we experience the abundance that gives us the time and the convenience to serve God. Are we together now? Uh, I've said it again that most of the issue when it has to do with the supplies of the kingdom, wealth, riches, and abundance, is that number one, most people approach it from a carnal and ungodly perspective. It's, it's from a standpoint of loss so the entire exegesis around the subject of wealth is coming from a heart that is already depraved it's not a heart that truly wants to honor God it's just a heart that wants to grab and get and so it's largely a marketing of lust but that's not the way of God number two is that there is as I will always say an imbalance in the communication of the precepts that leads to it so we have preachers who communicate their ideas on what they believe is the kingdom system allocated, the economic system of the kingdom. And they give the best that they can communicate. And then you find out largely that from many of those teachings, the members don't prosper from it. It is usually the preachers that prosper from it because the members appreciate the preachers for teaching them. But they go back and since they themselves don't have congregations to appreciate them, there is nothing for them to return home with. And they are angry and frustrated and then they now begin to write all kinds of devilish things about the gospel and about men and women of God. And then we have on the other side entrepreneurs and business people and all kinds of people who bring all kinds of ideas about wealth and that is wonderful and well-meaning but some of these things are a mix of of Scientology and some of it is even a mix of all kinds of ancient religions and things that reduce God to become energy and just reduces God to become a force just like many other forces so by the time you dwell and explore those things your conclusion about God would just be that God is some kind of sovereign energy in the cosmos who can do something to your brain and so on and so forth so there is largely an imbalance my question tonight is what is truly the way to accessing the supplies of heaven is God so wicked my brothers and my sisters that he will leave us in the dark and watch us move in pain and in the financial squalor that continues to press people down to a point where there is not enough even for our children it says if you been evil know how to give good gifts to your children if you been evil in the depravity of your heart yet you can create space for compassion to be able to look at your child and bless your child let me give you a guarantee i promise you in the name of the lord jesus christ if you listen to me you will never never be poor if you listen to me you will never be small it's a guarantee i give you in the name of the lord forgive me if i sound arrogant but it's true just pay attention to this thing don't 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 tamper with the equation when you don't have results. Get results first, then you can say, oh, you are wrong. I discovered another route. This teaching is a symbol of God's mercy because there is a tsunami coming. It has started. It's sweeping everywhere and everything close to it. And it's unfortunate that there are many believers that might be victims of this that we will never get to a point where we begin to eat our children do you know women eat their children in the bible to eat your children now doesn't mean to eat your child physically that you can mortgage the future and the destiny of your child so that you satisfy your hunger of today you have eaten your child many of our parents ate our destinies let me tell you the truth they ate our destinies in selfishness there are many people today in marriages they should not be but the parents say you must enter so that we will eat that's eating your child there are many people who should not be involved in certain things at all there are many pastors who should be in the field serving the lord 
they are somewhere roaming around forcing supplies to come from where it's not found I will never serve Satan to feed my stomach I will never serve Babylon to feed my stomach it's a vow that you must make that my entire life will be spent serving the purposes of the kingdom i will never serve the lord and quote scriptures and fall down under the anointing only to stand up and become a victim of a system that will define for me how much time and space i give god I'm not going to be talking so much about the spiritual principles we understand. I just want to pick one of the subjects that the Lord put in my heart and drum it into us and then we are going to pray. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Increase in the kingdom increase in the kingdom increase in this kingdom is a product of value write it down increase in the kingdom the greatest gift that can happen to a man is to be shown the systems and the ways that construct your life to become valuable please listen very carefully the law of value your value defines your degree of usefulness please write it down your value defines your degree of usefulness the degree to which you are needed within a civilization within a sociological context the degree of your usefulness not just your uniqueness not just your skill you can have skill that is not useful to the context of a civilization the degree of your usefulness is what we call your value and god so designed that the supplies of heaven are routed listen carefully the supplies of heaven are routed through the medium of value that when God wants a believer and one who is a citizen in the kingdom to rise to a point where you begin to access the riches and the blessings of heaven he does not just favor you as it were with giving you money but he brings you to a pedestal in life where it becomes impossible to ignore you are we together now there are many ways he achieves that but that the gateway into accessing the supplies of heaven experientially is becoming valuable now but most people most of the teachings on value does not capture the full import of what makes it rewardable it's not enough to know that your value is a measure of your usefulness just because you have something that is useful to me does not mean you will be rewarded for it there are many people carrying useful things but are not rewarded for it they are valuable yet they are not rewarded is that true so what is the system that translates your value to compel the environment that you live in to come gentiles coming to your light and then they are kings to the brightness of your rising get this tonight and you will thank me tomorrow i've taught you here that your value decides who pursues you it's true your value decides who pursues you you know you are valuable 
by the extent of demand that is placed on your grace on your skill on whatever it is that you represent now most believers will frown at what i'm saying that's why they are poor that's why they struggle we pray and that's very important we study the word we are faithful in church but we do not understand the systems allocated to bring us out of this qualo of hardship many of the things we try to address are symptoms of one central deficiency value in the area where value plays nothing will cover for it are we together now so your value is a reflection of the extent of your usefulness and i've taught you also that who pursues you determines the magnitude of your reward it is not just because people are pursuing you the quality of people pursuing you is also the quality of the reward that accrues to you if a president needs you you would be rewarded at the level and at the statue of a president is that true yes how can i call on your name and end up in shame no way no way how can i bow down before you and then bow down before a man no way no way because Ever present help in time of need. You are my God. Do you know that when you become valuable, you will command dominion in a way and manner that will not only bring God glory it will bring glory to you it will bring glory to your family you will bring beauty and glory out of your life when you become valuable pegged at a level where your usefulness cannot be ignored pegged at a level where every other factor to downplay your usefulness becomes inconsequential that you rise to a point where not gender not geographic limitations cultural barriers etc that none of these things sustain the ability to be reason enough for men to ignore you that's value value is not that you have something that is is being biased by loyalty so i have something that only my tribes people patronize and they're only doing that just because they had that my name reflects that now they, oh you are from this state and okay let's come and buy this no when you sustain an ability and you peg yourself at a pedestal in life where regardless of what else is not important in your life people ignore it because of the necessity of what you carry you are valuable it was said about jesus all men seek for you not some not yoruba people seeking for a yoruba man not Igbo people seeking for a Igbo man not northern people seeking for a northern man this is largely what we call value in our world so if i have value now i just quickly go and look for my people and say i'm the son of the soil your boy has come with this if you leave me like that and so we have a crowd of people it is it's largely just ethnocultural but that god puts something in your life my brothers and my sisters that will cause all men regardless of value nobody will ever ask you where you come from they don't care whether you are male or female nobody cares whether this water was made by a male hand or a female hand nobody cares whether once you are tested to the point of death you say let me have that water whether it was made by a child or an adult the moment people create certain factors to demean you you are not valuable enough if any other excuse is worthy enough to frustrate you then you are not valuable if you listen to what i am telling you your children will bless you tomorrow years ago the holy spirit would tell me pay attention 
and let me make you valuable. I didn't understand the extent of what he was saying. Oh, today I'm grateful. There is no magic that is going to happen in your finances. Let me repeat. There is no magic that is going to happen in your finances. If you do not trust God to take you to a point where you become extremely valuable, I give you a guarantee in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. As far as accessing supplies by yourself here on earth is concerned, you will live a frustrated life. It's a matter of time. And I'm not talking of business here or a job here. <clears throat> Leave all those things first. You see, it is your value that gives life to those things. They don't give life to you. Many have not been taught that part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives is not just to help us know God. It's not just to help us walk in character. The Holy Ghost upgrades men. He came into our life to build us to a point where we become valuable. The Bible says Jesus increased in wisdom. Listen carefully. Jesus increased in stature. Jesus increased in favor with God and with men. The Holy Ghost does not come into the lives of people and then reduces them to a point where the only thing useful about them is their knowledge of God. No, sir. Is God speaking to us tonight? Value. When your world comes to you, they watch to see what it is that you have in your hands that you are going to exchange for the reward they have. You are valuable when no amount becomes regrettable to commit to you when no amount becomes that means nobody would drop something and turn back and say i was stupid for dropping one million i just came i know pastor alpha is anointed but ah, ah, one million what entered me no when nothing in this world becomes worthy enough to reward what you carry you are valuable with beyond imagination and this is where God is taking us to because let me tell you if you have that even if you are inside a hole I guarantee you you will not beg for bread I hope God is speaking to you you see I love you that's why I'm telling you this the devil will tell you don't mind him then make sure you don't have children make sure that you you, you are not the one who will be taking care of your relatives. Do you know how many well-meaning believers who love God are still asking God questions still today? Lord, this is unfair. My father was a pastor. My mother was a pastor. I'm a preacher. I love you with all my heart. What is all this one that I'm seeing now? 90% of the discussion in homes is money, finance. Madam, what are you bringing? You are hiding money from me. The man says, you, are, you, are, you know, and all kinds of things. And God is watching. He's saying this time is supposed to be prayer time. Have you seen families doing devotion in the morning? And the father stops. Say, what, what devotion are you doing? And he picks a scripture by himself. Just because he wants to quarrel somebody who is not bringing resources. And devotion that is supposed to be a time of love and fellowship ends up becoming quarrel. A lot of people accuse pastors who steal church money and you see the truth is that except god shows you the way out otherwise this thing will press you one day you will touch what you should not touch hello please talk to me don't trivialize what pressure can do in the life of a man when you are pressured to a point where you are pushed to the wall, you will be surprised at the compromises you will be able to make. We are losing believers per second per second because of poverty and what it can bring. Did you know someone sent me a text one time and told me that the, whether they wanted to give the person a job God is my witness but that the person who was helping to facilitate it said they have to pay 250,000 naira before they will get the job I said so do you have the money he said no she was whether I think it was a she 
coming to just say if I can, if God can use me, I said, no, God doesn't use me for those kind of things. God does not use me for those kinds of things. Now, it's easy to criticize them and say, you mean you love God and you are doing that until you find out that a family of 10 people is depending on one person's pocket to eat. It's a cause. It's not the will of God. Imagine, for instance, that I tell them to give me a bucket now. And while I'm preaching, I just, I just say, if the bucket comes close to you, there's something written on the bucket, just read it and do whatever it says. Look at how your mind, everything I'm saying, will just go down because I'm passing a bucket. You look at the bucket and look at what is written on it and just shut down and say, what is all this again? But do you not know that it is capital intensive to lift up the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is heavy. It takes resources to lift it up. Did you hear what I said? The name of Jesus is not a feather you throw. It's heavy. It will take the shoulder of priests to take it up. It's easy to accuse men of God around. Oh, I like koinonia. They don't ask us to give anything. We just come and enjoy. We enjoy free dinner and they pay money. And we, I like this kind of ministry. Other pastors should be like that. Uh -uh. Don't be quick to criticize my brothers and my sisters. If God does not show you the key to this gate, you will stand there and almost die. <laughs> we raise your banner high we shine your light so bright we sing in our of you you will never walk in integrity if you don't have supplies i guarantee you in the name of the lord you will never walk in integrity life will push you to a point where you must compromise you will preach something you didn't preach 10 years ago because you have found out that in that message now can come a way of helping your belly value now but you see the value, listen carefully, my brothers and my sisters. Just being valuable is not enough. You must ensure that that value is needed and useful within the context of your civilization. This is as simple as it is. That your value must be needed. Listen. Listen. pastor come let's assume you are selling this and i don't need it now i'm passing you have this i'm just giving an example yet i don't need it will i reward you are you valuable is your value useful to me no do i need it no so you will still suffer although you are valuable that's what is happening to many of us there is almost nobody here that i know who has not recognized something that is valuable and just because we found it we start rejoicing and we believe life should just come and bless us no sir there is a standard that demands reward because the me who is moving around me too i'm looking for something with my resources and until I find the person with that something to the standard I consider rewardable, that is the only condition for releasing things. It's not enough to be valuable. Your value must first be needed and useful. Second, your value must be translated to a form where it is served with excellence. Excellence that relates to every level of mental development. Did you hear what I just said? That your value must be translated to products and services that are served with excellence. An excellence that can be able to be satisfying to any kind of level. That means that the value you provide 
and the excellence attached to it may only be able to serve people who are middle class that level of excellence may not suffice for the great who do not think price are we together now so there are many of us who are doing things but that what we are doing i give you an instance our daddy is a prof here are we together now now if you are a graduate they are not going to call you to go and head an institute of something with all kinds of benefits accruing to it because you are a graduate but not graduate enough you have not graduated enough to sit there so the problem is not that you are not a graduate but you are not graduate enough the question there is enough to the standard are we together now the person who takes last in a race I hope you know he has a time too that he finished but he did not finish at enough time to get the gold medal the question is not that they finished the question is there is a time allocated and whoever can beat the time is the one who gets the gold so it's not enough to say you are valuable as a man of god let me come back to ministry because many of you as and leave all those things let's talk ministry so let me talk ministry as a man of god it's not enough to be called You can be called you can feel anointed in fact quite honestly you can be anointed but is it to the level that can bless the people who God told to bless you because for every destiny helper there is a standard of grace that compels his resources to answer to you God can tell me or God would have put in my spirit to give pastor Alpha a car provided he heals my mad child are we together provided he does what not provided he prays in my house the condition for that reward is that whoever can come with the level of grace that can take away madness in that house so i'm anointed I know scriptures and I come to the house and I roam around and I just pray and at the end of it they just thank me they put malt in a bottle with straw and they put donut and they escort me with it outside and I go it's not that God did not send them your level of value did not make it fair for that answer to come to you that means when i sit in a meeting and grace is coming on me god is lifting me to the standard that can match the helpers so that their resources can now come to me are you getting what i'm saying now listen very carefully everybody who will bless you tomorrow is already alive today your level of grace has not risen enough to call them that's why they are shifted to your tomorrow if you enter that level of grace today they will come today I look at my life today and I see what people do to me and I'm almost tempted to ask where were you where were you when I was sucking ginger inside a straw and I was a believer are we together when I was trekking to first bank without money in my account by faith hoping that I will get miracle alert now you are receiving it free it's just coming there was a price God has authorized Pastor Alpha. This is your prayer request for the next level. But your value is here. It cannot match until you are lifted to the level that matches it. And so the Holy Spirit has the responsibility of upgrading the saints. Please listen carefully. Upgrading the saints to a level where their usefulness becomes worthy of being rewarded by any standard are we together now that means pastor alpha gets to a point where someone will sit down and think with his wife and the lord will say kai build one of my servants a house why don't they think about you because they don't think it's fair to give you that kind of house now remember they know you are called 
but they think it's unfair they believe that there are more rewarding ministers in terms of impact kingdom impact and the spirit of god by himself will take their minds to those people and say that's the man you should bless please believe what i'm telling you yes we've had people my brothers and my sisters i, I say this to the glory of god we've had people live and travel from other nations and other cities to koinonia not for the program travel with seeds and they said they sat down and agreed either as a business enterprise and say no since we love god and before we started this business we agreed that god should grant us grace so that we'll bless others and they leave their cities take flights go through the rigor of coming to zaria and all they are coming to do is apostle we want to sow into koinonia and we want to continue and you ask them why and the man will say i listened to one message say value not message say value but that value had grace and content in it to rise to a level where it can smash the devil worrying that man so the man listened to a message and as he listened to the message he fell asleep and in that sleep the message continued and jesus stepped in the jesus he fasted for two months to see he didn't see but he listened to one message and climbed the ladder of a grace straight into an encounter he would look for that person and reward him that was why nicodemus looked for jesus even in the night he traced him the bible doesn't tell us everything that happened there but i'm convinced he came with honorarium it's just my thinking it's just my simple thinking forgive me if i sound arrogant but there are some of you as you are seated right now there are all kinds of envelopes in your pocket you are waiting for us to share the grace so you will queue and spend time only to come and sow into my life now i'm sorry that i'm the one saying this and i'm not by any way manipulating you but it's the truth now you are thinking how will somebody stand for hours just to drop a seat to a man whereas you beg the same person why he was on the queue and he didn't give you transport fare are you seeing how it is there is no reward until your value rises to a point where it can be served with excellence as a man of God nobody will place a demand on your grace just because you are prayerful and just because you study the truths that you communicate must the impact of that word must be felt in the lives of the people when it is done clear the way for the rewards that will come now you don't preach because of money don't get me wrong however it is important possible my brothers and my sisters to be valuable to serve that value with excellence whether you sell it or give it free you must be rewarded it's a law by the grace of god and the privilege of god's hand god has granted me the opportunity to raise too many people around this nation and around the world for me to beg for bread my children will never beg for bread even if i give back to them and go to be with the lord because people have been raised and wisdom is justified by her children your value has not raised anyone yet you want life to reward you you see how unfair it is just because you think you are a graduate holding a certificate does not mean that what have you given to the world that you demand value from it's amazing how your relatives will not give you money but they will run for a meeting and kneel down waiting for a man of god to pass so they will drop money you beg them for rent they didn't give you yet they are carrying four times that amount to give someone who is already blessed nobody really blesses a needy person they bless valuable people you must translate yourself from this needy mentality to a mentality of value that even if you don't have money in your pocket you can say in the name of jesus i'm coming for koinonia there is an anointing that is coming i'm not falling for nothing every time i fall i rise upgraded in the spirit and a day will come i will put something in the realm of the spirit that will cause the nations to place a demand on my grace jesus climbed up the mountain and people followed him up the mountain 
to the point that his influence threatened the scribes and the pharisees they said no this guy is stealing the show if we don't do something about him he will destroy us koinonia let me tell you my brothers and my sisters you are gathered here every week by the grace of god because we continue to strive to communicate truths to you that are applicable to every facet of your life it's a formula that is unbendable you would hear testimonies here you would hear testimonies every week that the word produced results nobody leaves what works did you hear what i'm saying nobody leaves what works no sir the world does not have too many things that are working so the options are few there are not too many things working in this life so when you find what works you stay and pay whatever price it takes to stay that's why the presence of god is 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 is, is a is a place and a zone you must desire and hunger for forever because you see the presence of god does not just make you heaven bound it makes you valuable it truly does look at my life the presence of god that's where you find the anointing so while i'm worshiping in his presence i love i love i love your presence i love i love you think i'm just wasting time singing but while i'm singing and worshiping in his presence there is an elevation in the spirit a new anointing son you have this anointing and that but you don't have this one let me introduce this in your life and i'm there just worshiping the same way you are typing the letter in your office me too I'm, I'm 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 doing all of that the same way you are reading for a promotion exam and all of a sudden i step out and i see a grace that was not upon me yesterday now the grace has come meaning the person who will not bless me yesterday can now bless me because there is a grace that can now add him to the list of the blessings i love i love i love your presence i love i love I love your presence. I love, I love. I love you, Jesus. I love, I love. Shalabakato Saladat. I love your presence. I love, I love. Listen. Forget about bringing a valuable person down. You don't know how needy this world is until they find true value. All this issue of trying to bring people down is a joke. When you find especially value that is stamped with the hand of God, only God can bring that person down. I'm telling you this. Koinonia will continue to grow from glory to glory it's not just some recitation the formula has been given the scroll is not closed the seals have been broken it's been open we have seen it with our eyes the things men do not have how could they resist it an anointing is not sold in the market an anointing is not stored in a bank the government does not have it so how dare you trivialize the power of God upon the hand of upon the life of a man and then assume it's not there your need will force you to remember that only the anointing can solve it listen you are seated now in this place to some of you you are attending a service I wish you could see in the realm of the spirit that you are climbing ladders some of you travel from far you just thought you came for a service until you go back on Sunday on your little prayer group and you say let us pray fire and you see fire everywhere to an extent that you say what is this what is going on here and everybody descends they will stop calling you brother immediately they, they will have to invent a name to show you you have risen in the spirit Let me tell you this 
it's good to know how to cook it's good to know how to do business but my brothers and my sisters be anointed this is real value be anointed have something upon you that no man can buy the same way you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth he said thou anointest my head give us that scripture you did not anoint my cup the goal is for my cup to run over but the oil came on my head and the result showed in my cup it takes more than a good profession to prosper it takes more than a good skill to prosper there is only so much reward you can get from that angle ah but when his hand comes upon you blessed is the man that my god finds and puts grace upon you your life will be a wonder you will you will walk upon gold as dust i'm telling you this listen let me tell you all these money money things you see people chase around most people don't have any money they just have enough to solve their basic needs so they look rich they are poor and yet that's what distracts a lot of people but when you stand say lord put something in my life put something upon me i i don't know why people don't pray that prayer oh god shorten my journey i don't have time shorten my journey let there be an anointing on my profession listen 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 come emeka you are a doctor come watch this we are going to pray this gentleman is a doctor when someone is sick they will meet you for injection or meet you for whatever now your profession does not determine who you bless the anointing on your profession will make a rich man come as your patient you see now that one is not mbbs again that one is the anointing influencing your possibilities so a day that no doctor is around the billionaire comes and the holy ghost not your profession pushes you there you have a restaurant you are a chef congratulations but not being anointed you will continue to cook for poor people for wherever they will finish eating and then back again and say i don't have 10 naira i don't have 15 naira but when the anointing comes upon it the anointing will make you go to visit your auntie just when a politician is there and he says i'm looking for someone there is a meeting and he says ah my daughter is here that one is no longer your skill that one is a grace from heaven that comes upon men listen you can be a preacher and have a good understanding of scripture mighty exegesis of scripture and they keep inviting you to different places wonderful you will be blessed but the eye of your helpers will never meet you until there is a grace that grace is what will take your seed your message whatever you represent to the ears of the man that can announce your ministry How would I have risen from Zaria here? How many public address structures do you have? I'm not on Facebook. I'm not on any social media as a person. It's not everything that is just good preaching. It's not everything that is just... Mm -mm. There is an anointing that announces. It's called an oil of gladness. It can take men and make you above your fellows please listen the financial tsunami that is coming to destroy men a time will come where you will see people i'm not i'm not i'm not a, a sadist but a time will come where everything you have every other person has it you are educated they are educated and then the other person contending with you is a tribesman of the director what then is your advantage There are things when you have only the rich look for you there are things when you have only the poor look for you there are things when you have only sick people look for you 
there are things you have only those in need of legal issues look for you there are things when you have only hungry people look for you but there are things when you have all men will seek for you all men all men God designed it that way so when Jesus was about to start his ministry having done everything he did the Bible says he went to the wilderness and cried there 40 days 40 nights fasting and he returned in the power of the spirit and then Acts chapter 10 tells us how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power the Bible says he went about doing good healing all day that were oppressed something humorous happened today I I have never been to Shiloh as a person and I was just sitting today and all of a sudden I got a text the pastor in charge of registering pastors in Shiloh sent a text to my phone and said man of God are you coming we want to arrange your reservations and this I said what is this now listen I'm just saying it to encourage you I don't know that man from Adam are we together now yet there is somebody who will not stay in the secret place but will keep lobbying you will go there and be roaming around the gate like a thief they will say please join the members or sit in the overflow listen once you are struggling to be accepted in a realm and they are rejecting you it's a sign that the anointing has not opened the door go back don't force yourself just go back when you try to enter as a pastor you see other pastors and you are fighting for acceptance and they are saying mr man we invited a b not you will consider you one day stop making a mockery of yourself go back to the secret place and say where is the god that puts oil on the head of men let me tell you my brothers and my sisters when what comes upon great men comes upon you there is no door that will remain closed thou anointest my head with oil is someone ready to pray tonight this is the value that i brought for you that if you if god grants you access to the anointing and you can serve that anointing with excellence there is no door listen you don't have to leave your profession it just needs to be anointed many of us are educated but our certificates are not anointed many of us are skilled but your skill needs to be anointed i'd like you to find a corner our time is gone for the next five or ten minutes worship team just set the atmosphere for us find a place and blast in tongues and pray in the spirit and cry to god and say lord you are the giver of all good things you don't withhold good things lord put something upon my life place an anointing upon my head that will answer to the needs of kings that will answer to the needs of nobles place an anointing upon my degree place an anointing upon my masters place an anointing upon my phd oh god place an anointing upon my profession i am a lawyer but only an educated one can you put an anointing upon my legal practice your usefulness amplified by the presence of the anointing worshipers pray lord i can sing i have written songs but let an anointing come upon my song so called Lord, I'm a businessman. It is true that I've paid my price. Doing well, learning the principles of business. But let an anointing come upon the value that I provide. Outside, make sure you're praying. Overflow, make sure you're praying. Now anointest my head with oil. Shabakatokata. My business overflows. 
my ministry overflows, my church overflows, thou anointed my head with oil, favor overflows, thou anointed my head with oil, my career explodes, thou anointed my head with oil. Koinonia, pray. You are opening the gates of greatness. Pray. that you do whether it's your job whether it's your business and say lord let your anointing and your fire come upon it and let there be an explosion from the left to the right lift your voice and pray if you are in ministry pray over the work god has put in your hand lord it's time to take the power the glory of god to the nations it's time for the gates of ministry to be opened for the sake of the gospel as a businessman, it's time to rob minds with the great. Lift me by your anointing, O God. Your certificate can give you a job. It will take the anointing to rise. to pray a serious prayer lord by the anointing on my life take away poverty and hardship lift your voice and pray if there is an anointing on my life then there is a demand for it let the anointing of my life roll away financial reproach let the anointing upon my life activate divine supply by the ministry of destiny help us that it will be a privilege for men to arise and answer to the cause of my people pray god will answer i tell you at me look at me we're praying there is an anointing that works like perfume Isaac used it and said my son is like a field I place something upon my son that makes him to begin to smell like a field that the Lord has blessed that means you pass and that aura attracts you have you seen people you just like and honestly there is nothing there is no reason you just look at them and you go out of your way to ask questions what are you doing in zaria i just came do you have a place to stay and you too you are wondering the smell 
when the woman broke the alabaster box the bible says the perfume filled the room there is there is this plant they call queen of the night that's the name i think is that true and once it's night when other plants are sleeping that plant just takes over the entire atmosphere the anointing is smellable you can be within a vicinity and the spirit of someone begins to know ah, this man is here let me go and see this person I say i knew it i knew you were there hold on wait for me and the person will go and bring something i like you to pray the fragrance of your glory lord let it smell my life that as i walk my life becomes a walking miracle to pray two more prayer points i like you to cry and say lord i am the one who will break the circle of hardship in my entire lineage there are many of us here listen listen let me tell you the truth you will be a wicked person if you don't think of your children the power of god is here i sense a strong anointing i like you to pray that the grace upon your life will crush hardship once and for all over your family lift your voice and pray says John was anointed from the womb listen until that time they never named anybody John so they wanted to give him a name an identity like what was the status quo but when the angel came you see that Zechariah wanted to corrupt the destiny of someone who was going to be the greatest of all prophets according to the mouth of the Lord and the, the father's mouth was shut so that the destiny be preserved listen when you do uncommon things uncommon men come to you when you do common things common men come to you you are going to pray lord anoint me for unusual things 
unusual dimensions unusual ministry unusual business unusual medical practice it has to be unusual no table they said that a notable miracle had happened lift your voice lord an unusual prophet an unusual apostle an unusual evangelist an unusual caterer an unusual chef come on pray an unusual IT consultant an unusual doctor an unusual professor dimensions of the workings of the spirit unusual dimensions unusual dimensions hallelujah listen let me tell you this I shared with you years ago that a man of God was praying for me and that man said something that disturbed me I went to sow a seed to him and he said oh Lord create a problem that only him can solve I, I, I thought that was selfish when you talk of kingdom kingdom is not a thing of competition and the rest but he said he has prayed his prayer whether I believe it or not it was later as I began to grow that I understood that ah he was not being selfish he was just saying Lord distinguish him put him in a level let me tell you Rehoboth means God has given me my space there is your space in life that you dig a well they can come and close it but there is a space in ministry there is a space in business you are going to pray one prayer lord allocate my space and keep me there a space that is beyond competition beyond contention there are names that when you call on earth there is no basis for comparing them there are names when you call in ministry in business in family life they are outstanding they are in a class of their own your father god is in a class of his own cannot be compared with any other god Listen. I met I just returned from a trip and I met a particular music minister and he came to me and hugged me I said oh I've been blessed by your songs I'm happy to see you now and he looked at me he said apostle this is not the first time you're meeting me I said really he said in 2012 I was in a meeting I was nobody you called me out and prophesied to me and I said I did he said yes that you prophesied to me that the wells of worship the fountain will begin to rise and that from that time his life had moved forward and while we were in the meeting the lord spoke to him, to him again and i told him i said you are going to write just one song one that will surpass what your songs have done again it doesn't take too many things to lift you just one noise by the hand of god there was one earthquake bang what did ben carson do to be great just one surgery and that was it when you call all the music ministers in this nation it's usually one song many songs they wrote but one song bishop td jakes wrote one book woman thou art loose till today no other book has brought him that kind of reward dr miles munro had written so many books bestsellers but when he wrote rediscovering the kingdom 
that one book was a game changer please can we borrow one more minute and say lord what is the one thing that will announce me by your grace let it come let it come let it come lift your voice and pray lord what is the one song lord as a man of god what is the one meeting the one meeting that will announce my grace as a doctor who is the one patient that i will treat and get out of poverty forever one thing is needful one thing one thing pray koinonia there is a god that answers one encounter many he had with jesus changed his life one encounter with catherine kuhlman changed his life one encounter we are still praying lord what is the one thing the one dimension who do i need to prophesy to for my life to change whose body must be healed through my hands what is the one meeting that will announce your grace upon my life what is that one publication that the nations will hear hallelujah praise the lord i think it was last year last year or early this year i had the privilege of flying with professor wale soinka and when i got into the aircraft he was sitting on my seat and i looked at him i was standing face to face with a nobel laureate very simple looking and I thought about this thing again. It's not many things that lift people. They wanted to walk him so that I said, no, no, no. You can't do that. This is a great man. I use it as an opportunity to practice the law of honor. Say, please keep him there. Just find whatever seat for me and let me sit. Why will I walk him up? Whereas I aspire that the world hear God's voice through me. Too. One thing. Almost everyone here has or has used a phone and almost everyone here is not using the phone he or she is using as the first phone is that true that when the mobile devices came out and got to africa we had all kinds of models that we now consider inferior what made us leave it they didn't force you they brought out something and showed you the excellency of that new gadget and it forced you to carry your own money and go to the market and insist that although i have a five thousand naira phone i have been dissatisfied because someone showed me something that the phone i have cannot browse and so it does not sustain an advantage to connect me to the world from where i am and i have someone marketed another phone and it will make me hate something i once loved results are powerful they challenge people to change their minds results can make a man change his mind it is true come see a man the woman said at the well come see a man that has told me that means she had the ability to repent it's just that everyone who met her did not have enough result to convince her most people are not rebels the level of result it takes to persuade them is absent in our lives did you hear what i just said most people are not rebels most people who don't go to church are not that hardened we have not communicated a dimension of the life the power the grace and the possibilities of the kingdom enough to make them want it and so we minister christ from a standpoint of extreme weakness and disadvantage it's not force enough to draw people is god speaking to us now most of your family members let me tell you this for many of us it looks very difficult to reach your family members because you look at the hardness of their hearts and wonder how will i break this ground let me tell you something if god mandated you to reach them then you need to find out lord what can convince these people enough for five thousand men aside from women and children 
to climb up a mountain and stay three days without worrying for what to eat the parents were not irresponsible jesus must have done something to them that even made food unnecessary and he took responsibility and said look i have to feed them because i'm sure part of the many things he taught them was the responsibility that comes when you become part of the fold of god and he said i have to prove what i just said so don't dismiss them that way and the disciples said you've put us in trouble now these people we we have wet their appetite and they expect a performance and jesus said that's all right and they got the young lad andrew brought a young boy with five loaves and two fish jesus said watch something now do you know immediately they ate it what was their response we will make you king whoever can feed us every day without begging caesar deserves to be our king no election could it be that this is why politics is hard in africa and nigeria a people came together and said jesus you must be king and jesus said i know it's because you ate bread but at least they were honest who will throw away a bread giver free to the point that 12 baskets were gathered i was once hungry now i'm so full i just look at the bread you will have to be king the same thing will happen in your family Rega listen listen regardless of your all this um firstborn secondborn is wonderful in terms of respect and honor but in terms of kingdom advance whoever has the ability to reveal jesus in a way and a manner that solves the needs of the people must be made king even if it is joseph the sun the moon and the eleven stars will bow they don't bow to age they bow to whoever if the sun and the moon bows then the person they are bowing to what is he that means he's neither the sun he's neither the moon he's neither the star what is the name of that person that the sun will bow to the moon will bow for this is the mandate of jesus it's not just to carry a tract and meet someone and harass him and while he looks at you and then you are done and you present a very miserable jesus he will ask you one question you cannot answer he said let me let me go and ask god he said ah, but i thought he sent you either we are telling lies and just carrying out the ritual of religiosity or we truly want to disciple nations let me tell you where the carcasses are truly there the eagles work human beings have real problems they are not idiots except they don't find real answers they will inconvenience themselves to any level when men complain they are not complaining because of you they are using you to complain that there is not result enough to keep them in the days of the generals by 2 a.m it should be for a service of six or seven people will gather there and not mind whether it is the sun or the moon or rain or whatever because they knew one encounter with these strange beings that were not like human beings their lives would change most of the people that knew the generals met them only once they didn't meet them many times but now we can be pastors over people for 10 years and nobody can reproduce our grace and you expect them to still be loyal people are not stupid my brothers and my sisters are we together disciple nations not by drumming people's faces and harassing them where the carcasses are there the eagles will gather no atm ever called your name once yet you cannot resist it when you pass and you see an atm even if you don't have money you have respect for it because of what is inside i watch people queue before something that is not a living thing and they are patient for a long time what if you are that atm that is the same way gentiles will come 
it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the lord's house shall be exalted above every other mountain and above every other hill listen and the nations will say come let us go let us go they were not invited they are advising themselves come let us go to the house of the lord he said there he will teach us his ways for out of zion shall proceed the law it's time for us to mentor nations with our results are we together now yes that the greatest businessman in zaria is a tongue-talking anointed christian everybody that needs him will follow him to church without invitation and sit down whether they like it or not that's how to mentor nations when you see someone who has what you are looking for rolling before god whether you know why or not you will start rolling first before you understand why he's rolling we are too weak to make Jesus powerful. And this is what we want to correct tonight. Listen, let me tell you this. There is nothing you can do with a man or a people that become a force. When you have results, real results, replicable results, it is impossible for a territory to deny your presence. Here's what Jesus said, teaching in what we call the Beatitudes. The principles of the kingdom he says you are the light of the world you are the salt of the earth he says you are a city not like a city a city that is set on a hill how can a city be on a hill men whom the earth was not worthy of a city set on a hill giving light men will light that candle and put it on top of a bush for a very long time pastors have made the church weak because they don't know what else to do when they are not saved they are the weakest in every society they are the poorest they are the whatever it is under the spirit of servitude within a territory i reject that for koinonia in the name of jesus christ that you are able to disciple and mentor nations God is giving us influence and granting us grace. And when that influence comes, people will be able to listen to you. You will say the same thing now that you said five years ago. And people will cry hearing you. Not because more anointing was added to it. More result is now backing what you are saying. The same thing you said before. Are we together now? everything they say about you is correct until your results prove otherwise everything if they say your god is weak they are right until your results prove otherwise hearing is my father glorified 15 and verse 8 john hearing brothers and sisters let us not be hypocrites for god's sake this is how god is glorified when ye bear much fruit when ye bear much fruit when ye bear much fruit my mother and my father when your children become the best and the most influential people within a city and are madly in love with god they will influence more people within a year than you will do holding a crusade in 10 years everybody is seeking for someone to reference his life after that's why we chase after musicians that's why we go online searching for people when people show certain things that we want even if we know they are lying we still follow them if someone decides to wear rags today if you see the money he has close to the rags tomorrow you too since you don't have the money you can start with the rags at least you can tear your cloth to look like it to give you hope that you will become like him we are making nonsense marketable because there is no result to back it I vow to myself and I vow before my God that I will never be a weak representative of the kingdom by every standard as far as the territories are located for my my spiritual impact is concerned we will have to do something for God that will make God beat his chest and say truly I have sons upon the earth that's why we are here that's why we are here and many times you will think that these things are just boastful statements no 
when a man speaks you need to look at the force back in him if it is your ability whether intellectual physical whatever then you are wasting your time but the power of the highest mary said how shall these things be seen that i know not a man and the angel said the power of the highest will overshadow you are we together now the mandate of jesus is not more members the mandate of jesus is not a greater name for a ministry the mandate of jesus is not more people in a register the mandate of jesus is not more slaves loyal to a man called a man of god the mandate of jesus is that there will be people who understand the kingdom and love him and understand his system to be able to mentor and disciple nations your nation must look up to you otherwise you have failed if it's business if it's ministry if it's family whatever it is go and make disciples go and make disciples go and make disciples go and make disciples not go and have denominations go and make disciples that you should not give room for any unbeliever within your territory to hold a level of influence that will have to make you bend to God to receive their resources. No, sir. This is a message that the devil has fought for many years. And so many believers, especially we around the northern middle belt and part of the... We, we, we are not kingdom and we are not strategic in our understanding. We are morally sound, bless God. We love the Lord with all our heart, bless God. But we find out that our lives are empty, void of spiritual meaning. Because we do not know what else to do. So we seek God. We love Him. We become anointed. We even fall under the anointing. But to what end was that anointing given? We don't know. So we roam around and hope that the mundane things that we spend our lives on will give us meaning nothing else has the ability to give your life meaning than knowing that you are living your life according to purpose and that it is giving joy to the father in a few minutes from now we are going to be celebrating dimensions of the hand of god the miracles of god you know why we are doing this because we know that first we love the people but second it is a testament that's why it matters when unbelievers hear what god is doing when believers hear what god is doing thank god for it but the real impact is that what god is doing gets to the ears of the unbelievers because it will compel them are we together now you are gathered here tonight first because you love God he brought you but quite honestly because you are trusting God for various levels of supernatural solutions people have been here since Monday Tuesday Wednesday families groups ministries people have traveled endured all kinds of things because someone told you or you heard it in a message that if you came here your life and your situation will change did you think they lied sit back and watch what god does with your life in a few minutes from now. So, that when you leave this place and go back as a man of god you will be surprised yourself the next time you see you will not come alone you will be too grateful to come alone when a mother comes here and sees what god does to her she will remember immediately that my stubborn neighbor's son that means they always wanted him change it's just that they had been looking for a place anointed enough to make them let me tell you i still say it again and again i thank god for posters i thank god for handbills please i'm in no way trying to demean them but nothing will cover the publicity that real power and real result creates people are too grateful rumors spread in overnight nobody paid for it and yet it goes round that's the same way the word of the Lord can come upon you ah, I came for koinonia a program called the miracle service I just strolled there 
and my life changed overnight madam the next one is next month i don't have money you, you better look for money and you see people run around and come and receive and so our own assignment is to continue to stay with god to make sure that everybody that comes you take a level of fire that like queen of sheba you say half of this was not told me if we are not doing this this is just jamboree and a ceremony and a sin and wickedness because when people pay so much price and leave wherever they come from to come and sit down and then we entertain and make all kinds of noise and jargons and they go back again with the same pain we've wasted their time and we cause the heart of the father to bleed we make miracle walk promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are we make a miracle walker promise keep I've not even touched what I wanted to share as the message for tonight God, this year your life will change in the name of Jesus Christ this year your life will change by the power of the Holy Spirit it's true let those who laugh at you Ephesians chapter 3 please let me have your attention I want to share with you a powerful revelation that God put in my heart for this meeting and then we will pray mighty God we bless you Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 the Bible says now unto him please look up the Lord has been pounding this scripture in my heart and I need to teach you and show you and make sure that you get it as a revelation now unto him that is able to do everybody say able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think everybody say ask or think one more time say ask or think that means there are two ways listen carefully your petitions and requests get to God number one is through your prayer by verbalizing it number two is through your thinking your paradigm also is a prayer request it sends prayers to heaven the Bible says God will do what you ask or think not ask and think that means when you are not praying and you are thinking you are still praying before God your mouth and your mind are also prayer warriors the only thing is that for many of us our mouths are better prayer warriors than our minds most times our minds pray nonsense and that's why you find out that the things that you desire you may not see the results that are consistent with your desires because there are two prayer warriors in your life one is your mouth let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart both be acceptable that means the words of my mouth can be acceptable but the meditations of my heart can cancel everything he is able to do listen carefully exceeding abundantly far above all I ask far above all I think it matters it matters that the Word of God does not just penetrate our spirits alone the word of God must have an effect listen carefully you will never be a world changer you will never be usable in the hand of God until the word of God is able to influence your understanding influence you we're talking about fruitfulness you will never be fruitful this year just because a prophetic word came as powerful as it is you can limit God your mouth may be praying because you are told to pray but your mind continues to make your destiny unfruitful. Listen very carefully. Most of the miracles that we need, I submit to you, most of the miracles that we need 
are in the realm of our understanding and the realm of the mind much more than physical miracles we need a real miracle of a reconstructed understanding to be able to know God's perspectives this is the secret of victory this is how we win in this kingdom that's why the preaching and the teaching of the word is very important because they are the spiritual systems are located for bringing understanding when the word is preached and taught generally it brings you into a comprehension it influences your understanding and when your mind listen when your mind changes then truly your life will change it's true you are not truly free until your mind is free no matter what else around you is free if your mind is under captivity then you are really in bondage are we together let me show you something a revelation that god gave me for tonight luke chapter 4 we're reading five verses luke chapter 4 we'll start from verse 14 luke chapter 4 this is jesus now luke chapter 4 and verse 14 after his time of fast and prayer the bible says and jesus returned in the power of the spirit into galilee and there went out a fame of him through the region round about 15. and he taught in their synagogues you see jesus was a teacher he was a teacher he wanted to give people understanding 90 percent of his ministry was teaching 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 he built the disciples by teaching the impartations happen few times most of their encounters was the teaching ministry of jesus that's how they became apostles the bible says being glorified of all 16. let me have your attention now and he came to nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the sabbath day and stood up for to read he's about to read isaiah 61 now listen and there was delivered to him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. And recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Just keep 18. See how many times the various issues required preaching there were three main issues in the ministry of jesus that the solution was hidden in preaching not doing preaching number one very quickly that every time you met a poor man the solution lied in doing something to his mind the bible says he had anointed me to preach not just to give to the poor he had anointed me to do something to their minds because the issue whether it is some version say meek it doesn't matter no matter how you see it it still requires preaching so when you see someone in a financial predicament god's recommendation is that that person is not yet free until the word of god is able to do something to his mind otherwise that person will remain in bondage how true bless someone who is poor in his mind a thousand times his mind would turn his life back to look like his mind when it has to do with the poor the secret to really helping them is to camp them under the wisdom of god's word and the bible says to preach the gospel to the poor the next sets of people that require preaching amazing amazing this is where the apostolic and prophetic ministry in many regards has failed woefully the next set of those who require preaching are those who are captive in need of deliverance he didn't say to conduct deliverance he said to preach deliverance that means much more than driving the spirit entity in their lives and around their situations jesus is saying they are not truly free until deliverance is preached to them listen to my teaching the mystery of deliverance i call this deliverance through transformation that your mind is reoriented again to have spiritual understanding that keeps the door closed 
one of the things and and i thank god that this is a ministry that believes in the whole counsel of god shortly we are going to be praying casting out devils and just taking away these influences that stand the way of people but then the bible says that the journey to deliverance will continue being a cycle a helpless cycle to the point that it becomes a mockery until the preaching dimension not the laying hands dimension not the prophecy dimension the preaching dimension there is something that must be captured in your deliverance message that affects the minds not just the spirits and the bodies of men otherwise these spirits will make a mockery of you they will leave the people and return back because their mindsets have become strongholds the spirits have created fortifications around their thinking that will allow the spirit come back again are we together to preach deliverance not just to conduct deliverance i admit to you that it is here that the apostolic and the prophetic ministry in many regards has failed because of the charismatism that is around ministering to people seeing someone fall roll under the anointing you know when that happens it looks like it's an accolade on you as the man of god and so we enjoy it no matter how many times you must go through that rigor i'm satisfied provided it helps in making me shine but the bible is saying by and large the delivery will be tired <laughs> permit my english that person is not going to except if it's a fresh impartation and the person must know the new grace that is different from last week's falling there's a lot of mess in the body of christ demons continue to make mockery of our ignorance many people are permanent gateways for the entry and the exits of spirits it was jesus himself that carried out the demonology lecture he didn't give anybody he handled that course by himself and this is what he taught us remember when jesus talks you listen he says when a spirit leaves a man that means spirits can leave men we know that apostles and prophets we god has helped us in that area we know how to make spirits leave men but the bible says that spirit will go through dry regions seeking for a place of refuge are we together now and then the bible says not finding a place of refuge here's what the spirit will say remember the person had been delivered now and he's jumping in the church and he's happy hallelujah doors are opening and the spirit is saying i'm coming back the spirit is saying i will go back like the prodigal son the prodigal son said, I will arise and go back to my father. The spirit says, I will arise and go back to my house. He's calling the person who had been delivered my house. That means he's still, he's still laying claims. He comes back according to Jesus and finds the house swept, clean, but empty. Everybody say empty. Say it, empty. There is a law in the spirit that anywhere there is void, anything can fill it. When there was darkness and void the holy spirit came to hover around it swept clean through deliverance by casting out the devil but then empty because the word contents that will fill that person and close the door permanently is not there he has not received the preaching dimension of deliverance to let you know that now that this spirit has left you are we together now to begin to educate you into understanding what christ has done for you and then to help you to be able to stand your ground like paul would teach in the book of ephesians supplying you all the spiritual arsenals that can keep you safe now that you are free it's not there so the spirit will route through anything anger jealousy and gladly stroll back into the person unfortunately jesus said no spirit returns alone it will gather seven others more dangerous than itself and return to the person so that the end of that person is worse than the beginning if you're with me say amen this is why there are many temporal miracles you hear people say i received a miracle a spirit left me and then i started this and then the situation gets compounded and it becomes worse again because the person does not or he has not been educated to see the relevance you see let me tell you this come the moment you cast a spirit out of a person 
or out or around a situation spirits are not only in people spirits are also in situations situations are bodies that spirits can possess are we together now yes so that situation or that body the spirit leaves but the individual listen carefully the individual is here standing and his mindset has not been changed has not been altered the mindset becomes a gateway that spirit enters back and continues to influence the person and when this spirit study the man of god and they know that the man of god may be well-meaning he may be very anointed but his word content is very low they no longer will be afraid even before you cast them they'll just go out and you will think it's a sign that you are getting more anointed it's a sign that they have mastered your ignorance and created a way of of insulting you they will freely go and wait immediately after the grace they enter the person and continue to go so you see the labor it looks like this warfare is endless you will continue to cast out demons and demons and demons and demons forever whereas there can be victory established are you with me now yes. That's why you can have a particular dream or series of dreams or all kinds of attacks and then you can have a strong season where there is an emphasis on the ministry or deliverance ministry or something like that and then the demons leave and afterwards the patience and the interest to allow deliverance be taught you is not there and these spirits will return they are stubborn spirits so said Jesus they don't leave and go away even Satan left Jesus for a while and came back came back through Peter came back through Judas until he thought he got Jesus are we together the body of Christ does not have the patience to allow the Word of God let me tell you this if you are not teaching people you have to teach people the value of sitting to receive and to grow in the word the bible says let the word of christ dwell in you in all richness you're a man of god here please listen it is not so much about manifestation and rolling under the anointing and all of those kinds of things train your people to sit down and listen to the word of god and then train yourself to make sure you understand what you are teaching so that the people are not listening to what becomes poisonous to them if you're with me say amen when believers were saved in the early church they were not just left to go a few people were left without real spiritual follow-up and you saw what happened to them for instance in Acts chapter 19 the Bible says Paul having passed through the upper coast he came and he found certain disciples supposedly and then he asked them a question he said have you received the Holy Ghost since he believed and they said we've not even heard whether there be any holy ghost and then he said unto what baptism then were you baptized and they said unto the baptism of john and jesus corrected them and said no the baptism of john was a baptism of repentance so that you will believe on who that will come and then they were baptized in the name of the lord jesus and paul laying his hands upon them the bible says they were filled with the holy spirit and began to pray in tongues and they prophesied they were 12 in number all of them that was a new level for them when you just back down a little you read from chapter 18 the last six verses the bible talks about a man called apollos a great man he was an eloquent man fervent in spirit mighty in scripture the bible says but he knew only the baptism of john and then one day he came for a meeting and then aquila and priscilla met him and then they expounded to him the way of the kingdom more perfectly and then he become more useful to the body because he now began to argue based on the new lights that he had you must pray and cast away ignorance the worst oppression is not demonic oppression that the spirit influences you is that when the spirit saps your desire for the word so that you do not have time and especially for we men of god it's possible to be reading the bible just because of the pressure i've been ministering right from saturday back to back every day up until yesterday dash in here to come tomorrow and back again to finish the conference you can imagine over 18 sermons within one week so it's easy i can be up and doing just studying the bible as though i have an interest 
but it may be that it's just for the formality of finding a salmon and these spirits watch out for these kinds of things are we together you prevail as a believer when your understanding is altered by the word of God it gives you an appreciation for excellence it gives you an appreciation for diligence it gives you an appreciation for knowledge it gives you an appreciation for value you see the all-surpassing excellency of God's power it will make you need the Holy Spirit in your life it will damage ignorance from your life and strengthen you to be effective and remember the more your spiritual capacity is the more God can flow through you and from you to others this is how to disciple nations are we together this night so give us Luke chapter 4 again let me finish up and then we'll pray mighty God so the poor need the gospel preached those in need of deliverance much more than the casting of the devil they need to understand the message that the Bible calls preaching deliverance and then number three look up please to preach again the acceptable year of the Lord King James says the acceptable year of the Lord I think it's a new living translation that says to preach the year of the Lord's favor the word acceptable year there doesn't just mean the day God has agreed uh -uh. it was a direct translation but it is the Lord's favor to preach the Lord's favor so those in need of favor is more than just laying on of hands it's more than just prophecy receive favor there is an a spiritual education a spiritual curriculum you must pass through to really walk in favor it's one of the biggest mistakes again we make in church because we teach people that favor is unmerited that favor just happens when God wants to favor you but it's not true it's not true my brothers let me tell you this it is not true favor is merited There is a dimension of favor that operates as though unmerited but when you truly know what favor is and how it works you know that it is merited merited there does not mean everything even your obedience is done by the grace of god supplied you don't have the power to walk in it favor is not unmerited don't insult any man of god and don't look down any man of god you hear teaching and saying is unmerited that's not what i'm teaching you you may buy into his understanding and find out that we are saying the same thing but then i can tell you this if you are under this leadership and you want results in your life understand that favor is merited i've taught you this that favor is a child that a pregnant woman gives birth to right proverbs 13 and verse 15 good understanding give it or bring it for favor and he says the way of the transgressor is hard good understanding is like a woman proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15 good understanding is like a pregnant woman she can give birth to a child and the bible names that child favor transgression is also like another pregnant woman that can give birth to a child and the name of the child is hardship hardship is predictable there is there is an exact gestation period and you give birth to something that you name unfortunately it's life that names it hardship that's the name of your child favor that's the name of your child so when you tell people favor is unmerited they just sit down and say okay so what do i do and then they just sit down and say okay god just favor me and nothing will happen most people have not tasted what the bible calls favor i've said it again and again that most of what we call favor is breakthrough favor is only favor if it is repeated if it happens just once in a while or once in a long while that's breakthrough that's not favor it's true are we together so when you need favor jesus is teaching us in the temple that you must be taught that there is something called the acceptable year of the lord ah, 
I know there's more that's found in you. Be careful. Be careful what becomes the foundation of your spiritual knowledge and don't be ashamed to open yourself for change many times we are loyal to our current level that even in the face of truth we would rather be loyal to where we are than sustain the flexibility to move to where we need to be i have absolute disloyalty for error i'm not ashamed when i find out that there is a need for adjustment and correction just because you held on to a, a truth or a light all your life the moment you find the truth you see your loyalty you feel like you are betraying your convictions and we will never settle for less i know there's more that's found in you and i will never yell will never settle for less Many of us may have innocently learned that automatically demons just leave themselves out of you it may be an honest knowledge you have sustained for a long time you see that by very well-meaning men and women of God from a very sincere heart that's why knowing God is powerful you need flexibility to know God because you will know things about him that will, it will be like deliverance from a cult. Now, how do I come out of this knowing that all my life, this is what I believed in? I shared with you a story years ago about a gentleman, fine, smart man of God who for a long time held the view that, look, it was impossible, demons cannot influence people, etc., etc., and he held on to that and he was a very sincere person lovely fine nice gentleman and i remember when he came to see me in my room then as soon as i saw him i saw a spirit standing behind him that came with him and then i was i was trying to look for the most loving way to just tell him my brother you may need prayer no 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 no. i don't need anything i'm okay i'm all right i'm fine i'm this i said i understand i'm not about to argue with you but please this is what no 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 no. this person came for counseling something is obviously wrong with his life and now i'm seeing that this is what is wrong and the gentleman will just not agree and then i pleaded with him to give me a chance to pray for him and this guy would get up like 15 minutes later shouting and manifesting and talking on all kinds of things and then when I was done he got up I didn't look down on him I politely appreciated him for more than three days this gentleman could not be himself he went back according to him and carried his Bible he kept sending me text messages apostle so what is the meaning of this now I believe this I believe that do you cry when you buy a better phone do you feel bad when you be buy a better phone? Don't be ashamed when you are open to truth that is new, but truth it is. Just because it's not something that has been captured in your experience. That's why you must have meekness and flexibility. The goal is not to create argument and to, no, 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 no. If I find out that what I believe now is wrong, I will be glad to repent and find out what the truth is and in all honesty come and tell you I apologize I've seen better now I will not be ashamed to say it but my brothers and my sisters let me tell you God has granted us the grace to prove some things and these things we teach are not suggestions are we together yes. favor will not come upon you just because you want it the gospel must be preached you must sit down and you must be taught the systems that activate favor and then when the teaching comes there is an empowerment is usually light and grace light grace light grace full of grace and truth 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 that's how it works 
when the truth comes upon you then the level of grace to demonstrate that dimension you have had is given to you is someone learning tonight i'm saying this because most of us are in these three categories tonight trusting god you came for a miracle service because you are tired of all the things that have happened around your life and are happening some of us have come because we are trusting lord can you look down on me with favor and i'm showing you jesus himself teaching at the temple that's why they marveled at him 20 let's look at verse 20 20 of luke chapter 4 we're praying shortly luke i'm 20 now i'm 20 let's look at verse 20 and he closed the book and gave it again to the minister so there was a man of god there before him and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him 21 let me add 21 and he began to say unto them this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears when you read down the bible says they marveled at him saying what what doctrine is this is this not joseph's son where did he learn this one from now you must know something new to rise to a new level what you know has brought you where you are and if you stay there you will continue to recycle your results you must contend for light and glory and truth that's why i sang that song and i will never settle for less i know there's more that's found in I told you for many years demons used to oppress me remember my story as a man of god i went to many people sincerely let me tell you this by god's grace i tell you this i'm a student of knowledge there are few people that study and read like me i say it without humility and so i read lots of books that propose so many things and i walked in those things yet these spirits would not leave me as a man of god they would oppress me i would go to bed and they would oppress me sometimes even in the midst of fasting like it's happening to many of you i will round up the fast as i'm rounding up the fast the same experience will happen again i said what i mean what is this is that, will it be honest that i don't have faith eventually i found out what was wrong and god helped me in that area and that's why i continue to trust god to help people in these areas may god may god grant you the grace to prove what you know Amen. not just to say what you know this is a prayer you will appreciate in the nearest future may god grant you the grace to prove what you know Amen. because the end of all argument truly is results consistent results are proof that mastery has been gained are we together and tonight the lord wants to visit us like benga shared is a buffet a buffet of fat things he has set the table before us for yours it may not be that there's an infirmity you are trusting god for but there is a level of favor listen god has declared by his spirit that this is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness genesis 17 and verse 6 and i will make you exceeding fruitful he says and nations shall come out of you and kings out of your loins one of the keys i taught you that sponsor extraordinary fruitfulness is the favor of god this one everybody must cry it and you must receive it if every miracle service is dedicated to releasing favor it will be worth it because let me tell you my brothers and my sisters happy is a man whose jealousy the, the, when the jealousy of God zooms on you, you become a fearful wonder, even to yourself. It's true. It's true. You stand back and watch in shock and wonder and say, God, what are you doing? It's not unmerited. It is empowered, but not unmerited. There is an active contribution through knowledge and faith that brings it. And tonight i believe that in the name of jesus christ within the few minutes we have a very quick walk to do tonight there are many of us seated here the truth is that there are spirits around your life and behind the situations of your life and it does not matter trust god that they will leave you 
there are others your miracle service began while i was teaching because now you are gaining understanding so this is why these things continue to be repeated in my life but there are others the mountain that stands before you is a mountain of complete disfavor if in three days no one helps you something is wrong the favor of god is not on you 72 hours is too much for heaven to not respond to you forgive me if this sounds arrogant you will know it's true I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will come to you. I will come to you. You get up in the morning, Lord, thank you. And there's all kinds of favor daily loading you with benefits. And I'm not just talking finance. Finance is not the only expression of favor. It's a needed one, but not the only expression of favor. When God lifts men to make your life easy, you are trusting God for a new dimension in the spirit. Someone goes out of his way and gets a book. By an author you do not know and comes to give you and that book is teaching on the anointing in a way you have never seen that's favor it doesn't always have to be money when we say favor people think money you are trusting God for a realm of the prophetic and then God grants you access to a man of God you never would have had access to and one impartation brings you into that realm it is favor the absence of hardship is the proof of favor Let me sing this song again before we pray. Don't join me. Listen. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. Favor found in Him. New levels of grace found in Him. That you step into a meeting as a man of God and you know that principalities and powers yokes thrones dominions are about to be subdued it's not a suggestion you are not guessing you are standing from a pinnacle of light and no power in existence will sustain the ability to negate god's word upon your life a dear man of god i met you know while i was ministering great wonderful man just yesterday i met with him and he said apostle after a meeting and he said sir i've been trying to get a name for my company for weeks and for months i'm a man of god and i've been praying and i laughed because when something is within your power you see that within your power given to you by grace the same way a little child comes to say please give me pure water and you can bring out five naira because it's within your power there are some things after tonight it will be within your power it's soon within your power to speak and change things within your power and i told him i said let's pray i said this night you will have the answer and by evening he calls me and says apostle i almost cannot believe this even as a man of god that i was sitting down and this is the name this is that and i told him congratulations and he said what is this and i told him that this is called the power of god the power of god is a force it produces changes the same way you are sitting quietly now your life is at the mercy of an anointing and within few minutes my brothers and my sisters i i i never i never cease to marvel at what the anointing can do just like that just like in a twinkling of an eye and someone's burden has lifted for decades like that in in a moment and you're waiting for days in zaria will be worth it completely just like that please believe this if you're a worker in this ministry believe it 
don't get used to these things and allow people who come from somewhere to continue to receive and you sit down and say wow i know no let's not cheat ourselves let's be sincere god is able to do let me tell you it is within his power to surprise you tonight not just to give you miracles to surprise you it is within his power to begin to alter systems and structures this night not tomorrow this night this night the bible says every man should minister according to the measure of the grace of god given to you when you measure outside of the jurisdiction of the grace supplied it's called pride elijah said let him come naman elisha so that he will know not that there is a god in israel that there is a prophet in israel you would call that pride but the result showed it the same way you are a man of god now and in a few minutes if you are a man of god and you came here i want you to just get ready because what will come on your life it will lift you to a pedestal in the spirit that will surprise you you will walk in strange levels of glory this is by the spirit are you hearing what i'm saying now we're about to pray blessed be the name of the lord results are not acts of pride and arrogance they are acts of the grace and the mercy of god activated through knowledge so god takes you to a new dimension we are going to do a very we will trust god for a very quick walk i took out time to teach tonight because this is the real miracle the performance all of that is it, just a touch and all of that and one prophetic word but what you are hearing now is it this alteration that is happening not just to your spirit but to your mind find out how many impartation services jesus conducted you will be surprised there were few times one of which he breathed upon them received the holy ghost but most times he camped with them for 40 days all he was doing was to teach 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 but do you not know that in the light that comes from his hand is the hiding place of his power the power of god flows through his word so when the word of god is coming now you are immersed in his glory you see that and the spirit entered me not just when he laid hands on me when he spake unto me i've taught you how the word of god works that the word of god is like a tray is carrying something you don't receive it just for the word's sake you receive it for what is on it if, if I'm hungry and you serve me jollof rice, you bring it on a tray. Is that true? The first thing I receive is the tray. I receive the tray with joy, not because I need the tray. I need the rice. The word of God is a conveyor of the possibilities of God. So when the word of God comes to you, you are happy because of what is in it and on it. He sent forth his word. He sent forth his word. His word of deliverance. His word of, of healing. His word of lifting. Have you heard this proverb that in one day a nation can be born? He says, but as soon as Zion travails, she shall put forth a son. That means it's possible tonight that before the meeting is over, your phone can beep and you will see something that will keep you on your knees. And say, Lord, you just answered my prayer of five years in one day. How shall these things be? That's the voice of unbelief. We're talking God here. We're not talking a man. God. No wonder they said, Lord, I believe. But if what I call faith is nonsense, help thou my own belief. I need help. And Jesus helped him. Men of God, let's trust God for this miracle service to bring us into new realms of glory. Let's trust God. Let's trust God. The path of the just is as a shining light. It shines ever brighter spiritually financially in grace in influence the path of the just shines shines don't allow people threaten you with their ignorance when people are ignorant they rob their ignorance on you and make you guilty for opening yourself up to all the dimensions of god as though you are sinning so if you open up yourself to be blessed financially they they give a body language that suggests that you too you are joining them in this thing receive the whole counsel of god it is beneficial for all of god to be seen in your life you embrace the power of god and hate his resources the pain that is on your child will tell on you and it will destroy your life
I receive the whole counsel of God. I receive the whole counsel. If there is wealth, I receive it. If there is wisdom, I receive it. If there is grace, I receive it. Everything that is on this table, sometimes you can be served a buffet and sometimes they can even help you to serve it and you say little of everything. Little of what? Everything. And we will never see. Now you join me. We know there's more that's found in you. Time. Sing it from the depth of your heart. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. Just one prayer point tonight. Lord, my heart and my mind and my body is open to receive everything everything go ahead and pray everything oh god you're trusting god for a healing miracle now is the time to release your faith you're trusting god for deliverance from all kinds of oppression now is the time to believe him you're trusting god for a new level in the spirit a new level in the spirit a new level in the spirit believe in for it you're trusting god for a change of results god thank you i have evidences in my life but i need a higher level of results Lord, thank you for the prayer dimension, but I need a heavier grace, the spirit of prayer and supplication. Amplify the gift of God in me. Amplify the grace of God in me. Amplify the supply of the spirit upon my life. I need to disciple nations. I need to become an influence over a system, over a structure for the sake of your glory. Pray, pray. Pray, Lord, I need a visitation upon my family. How forcible are right words? How forcible are right words? There is a compelling power that right words bring. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, we're going to do it this way. We have to hurry up. We're just going to do four things this night. Number one, there will be a session of prophetic deliverance. I'll tell you what that means. I'll pray for people. I'll minister. But there are times that I'll just speak the word, the case, and then God will deal with that. Number two, I, I, if we have the time, the Lord may speak to one or two people. And then number three, we'll take time and minister the healing power of God to the sick. It's very important and then number four we'll have the time to pray on our requests and then i prophesy and speak over everyone and that will be it for the night the, the, that time will come with impartations and all of that i say this to you especially for those of you who are coming for the first time so that your heart can be open it's going to be a flow all through and i want you to participate with your heart let your heart be open by the way you can stand in for your loved ones and then those connecting online from whatever nation of the world there's no distance truly in the spirit you can receive you can believe and then god can make this true in your life hallelujah praise the lord there is a grace that i found myself releasing upon the body of christ in this season and that's what we're going to start with the lord i don't know god has been doing something in my life since january this year started is the grace for speed 
this is what i want to release upon our lives all through my meetings in lagos for every meeting the lord has instructed me to release that grace listen no matter how many times you've heard me pray it i like for your heart to be open there is real speed that can come upon the saints in this season that you will run just just run like elijah are we together now i want to i, I want to talk to you especially for those outside the ushers will only do their best but they are limited usually when i pray this prayer and i release this grace you will find people running physically by the spirit of god there's nothing strange about it this is an operation of the spirit and i want to pray that grace right now from the depth of my heart you see that most of what we need in our lives is speed you will not complain about delay again when you have speed because it will not make any difference god has a system of forcing you to catch up and i want to pray those who are coming here for the first time let this be the first miracle that you receive in the mighty name of jesus now i stretch my hands at the count of three i declare the grace for speed i'm seeing fire coming on the feet of people at the count of three i release that anointing in all the overflows right now one my god two three receive that grace right now receive that anointing everywhere inside and outside i release that grace that grace for speed life comes to you and you begin to run to overtake the chariots of ahab in the name of jesus christ i release speed speed inside outside i release speed people are receiving that grace strange speed speed in ministry speed in your career receive it god is releasing it upon you no more delays no more delays by the spirit of the living god no more delays online offline localized here i stretch my hands and i prophesy that grace right now people will begin to run by the spirit i'm seeing it in the spirit and energizing of the spirit is coming on men and women speed speed i prophesy speed 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 outside overflow one overflow two overflow three by the roadside speed for you and for your family members by this grace i crush delay i crush delay i crush delay I cross delay, I cross stagnation, remaining in one position. I judge the spirit and the force behind it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is telling me he's still releasing that grace. But now over families, not just individuals, you as a person may be moving forward but your family is under a strong yoke of stagnation. I stretch my hands right now. At the count of three, may God use you as a point of contact to supply speed to your family members. Are you ready? One, two, three, receive that grace. Families, families, speed, speed to the north, speed to the south, speed to the east, speed to the west. In the name of Jesus, speed to the middle belt. I release you, I release you, I release you. Kabakato shalikata. Enteleketos kaparakato shekete. Embrekete kete kete kete. Speed. In the name of Jesus, I cause every power. I cause every force. By this grace and by this unction, I release speed. The Lord is showing me a purple robe. I'm seeing a purple robe in the spirit and I'm seeing it come on people. Not everybody, but there are specific people. And I believe purple in, in, in scripture is symbolic of royalty. It is a system of enthronement that is coming on certain people. Lord, I don't know where these people are. They came for miracle service, but I stretch my hands. May the anointing locate such people now and shift you into a new dimension. 
the name of Jesus, receive that grace. Receive that grace. Men robed in royalty, beauty for ashes, beauty for ashes, beauty for ashes. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, beauty for ashes. for ashes beauty for ashes pay attention to what God is doing beauty for ashes hallelujah I'm seeing in a vision of the Lord and I'm seeing people the right legs being tied with something that looks like looks like a like a bag but tied and i'm seeing on it reproach that's what the lord is seeing reproach and the lord wants to take away that luggage of reproach it may not be for everybody but in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god that everything that represents a reproach in your life tonight here and now i release by the supply of the spirit the grace and i cause that reproach now I cross that reproach now. I cross that reproach now. I cross that reproach now. My God, I cross that reproach now. In the name of Jesus, man of God, I cross that reproach now. In the name of Jesus Christ, businessman, I cross that reproach now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a grace for biological fruitfulness like physical I'm not not just maybe financial and all of that real to, to dislodge barrenness whether it is for you or it's for someone connected to you it's time to receive it now I'm seeing the Lord is leading me to stand here just this room and I'm seeing an anointing locating people right here and taking away that yoke of barrenness. I stretch my hand. Whether it is for you or your family members, I'm just doing what the Lord is asking me to do. In the name of Jesus, may that anointing come upon you now. May that grace come upon you now. That if there is anyone within this row, among those standing, that is suffering any kind of barrenness, I come against it right now. I declare become a joyful mother of children, a joyful father, a joyful mother, a joyful father, a joyful mother, a joyful father, in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is asking me to do something serious here. Now, this is an apostolic ministry and we are word-based. So whatever it is you do not understand, you rest in the fact that we work consistent with the Lord. Um, what, what God, I hope that you don't find it offensive. God is asking me to remove some money and just hold it and speak and release a grace for financial rest over people. This is an instruction. That's why I'm taking out time to explain so you don't misunderstand me. You will be surprised to see what happens. I will not ordinarily do that. No, we, we represent, we are people of integrity and this is not some superstitious manipulative thing. But we are in a season of fruitfulness and God is giving me an instruction. So I'm just going to do exactly what God is asking me to do. Just to be able to hold something and release that grace. And that you have the grace to receive you surprised to see what happens father i've obeyed you in childlike foolishness i stretch my hands right now let this mantle and this unction lord let it rest on your people at the count of four that in a way you will shift them to such dimensions of supernatural supplies get ready now one two three four receive that fire right now step into that level of strange abundance in the name of Jesus Christ, 
I place a grace upon your life. You may look weak, but in the name of Jesus, let there be supplies from heaven. Let there be supplies from heaven. Let there be supplies from heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shabaka to Sekete Leka Barakatosh. Embregete Tekete Kosaliasa. Mantosko Barakatosh Kelekata. In the name of Jesus, I provoke over your life the grace for strange financial supplies. Don't say you don't need it. 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 In the name of Jesus, let it give you rest to serve the Lord. Let it give you the fortitude to stop begging in the name of Jesus. And it will allow you to concentrate on the matters of the kingdom and of destiny. I release that grace upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm still praying there are people entering realms right now in the spirit entering financial dimensions it is first spiritual before physical listen to me it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness let your faith come alive there are people entering dimensions and levels of grace and supplies and possibilities it's in you Don't come dropping seeds out of ignorance or pressure please please i'm praying from my heart if you don't know what you are doing please don't feel guilty and don't feel under any kind of pressure whatsoever are we together let me tell you this my brothers and my sisters when god begins to speak over your life in an area is because he has seen what is going to befall men and like an ark he's creating an ark of gopher wood that represents safety many people in this year will languish financially i'm telling you this listen there will be a lot of cries that's why god is releasing this grace there will be more people backsliding as a result of lack of resources than just a demonic attack please again i plead with you i plead with you in the name of jesus do not be under any pressure listen they did not keep a basket here for you to come and keep money I'm, I'm saying this from the depth of my heart and sincerely so I'm saying this from the depth of my heart and sincerely so we are committed to helping you experience God we are not playing games with anyone's destiny but I'm saying it again that there are people entering strange realms this is more than a miracle alert this is not miracle alert this is a realm it's a it's a dimension in the spirit and in the name of jesus i stand by this anointing again and i shift you step in step in step in step in step into this realm of surprise step into this realm of grace for your family for your family for your destiny step into this realm of grace it's in you lord it's in you Lord, we know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. I know there's more that's found in you. And we will never say we will never settle for less. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a woman outside. The Lord is showing me a woman outside. The power of God is coming upon that woman right now outside. I'm seeing that this is a woman of many sorrows. Her name is not given to me. But I'm seeing that this is a woman outside with all kinds of first financial issues and then family issues and anointing a very strong anointing will come upon that woman and the lord is telling me that he's bringing upon people the spirit of revelation is is a dimension of grace i want to pray that prayer right now father in the name of jesus christ 
I don't know who they are, I don't know where they are, but I stretch my hands. I'm seeing fire like rings of fire just coming upon the eyes of people. I release that grace right now. Help them, please. I release that grace right now. Blessed are you, O oh Lord, our God. it is holy. Blessed are you, O oh Lord, our it is holy. Something is coming on you. But I can't, I don't by wisdom, oh God, heaven's gates open up with understanding you order the sea. Creating day and night, turning darkness into light, arranging the stars to go. But I can't deny my I'm seeing like a letter and I'm seeing congratulations on it and the Lord is telling me it's a grace for jobs it's a grace for jobs please believe now it's a grace there are people who have been praying it and the Lord is asking me to count five just the, the number five and a grace will come for some you are already walking but God will lift you like the stars rising one two three four five receive that grace right now in the name of jesus i release that grace supernatural testimonies supernatural testimonies of jobs in the name of jesus supernatural testimonies for you and for your loved ones i don't care where the job must come from but i decree and i prophesy these jobs come to you speedily in the name of jesus christ Hallelujah. Listen. Ala bosha zibra haskada balakata. Le karuzi agas. Le kroska zibra hasada shiata. My hands are shaking. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. I'm stretching my hands. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. There are people that need to step into the healing ministry. The healing anointing. Right now, I release that grace. The healing anointing. You can't be a man of God without the healing grace. The healing anointing. Receive it for ministry. Receive it for ministry. The healing anointing. Outside overflow one. I'm seeing the angels of the Lord. There are impartations of the healing grace. The healing grace. The healing grace. The healing grace. anointing receive it you need it in the name of jesus so you can take the healing power of jesus to the nation in the name of jesus christ you are carrying that grace bodily you are carrying that grace Evidential grace for you. Hallelujah. Now I'm ready to minister deliverance. For those people, you bring them out now. I want to pray. I want to pray. I want to pray. Lift your hands. We are going to pray. We are going to read these spirits there are forces that stand the destinies of people listen please especially if this is your first time coming ah. 
I'm seeing fire fire from ground up fire from ground that's from your feet rising up I'm going to count three listen for those people please I want them out here there is a strong fire of deliverance that is going to come upon you and clear the way for you to experience open doors and victory are you ready now please I want you to believe it at the count of three I want you to shout the name Jesus it's not a ritual and let me have all the people here ushers thank you father every devil of darkness that followed anyone here any family any situation here in the name of Jesus it's time for them to come out of their hiding place I decree and I prophesy that at the count of three as you shout Jesus may the fire of God bring a separation between you and those influences one get ready two three shout Jesus come out of them now I cast every devil in the name of Jesus and they shall cast out devils I command the spirit influences behind situations behind circumstances I command in the name of Jesus that they come out of their hiding place in the name of Jesus bring them out spirits of ancestry territorial ordinances that keep men in the same position that refuse to let them rise I come against you in the name of Jesus bring them out in the name of Jesus I'm seeing a sword and I know that sword is the word of God I cast by that sword let there be a separation that every force tying anyone's destiny you're going to shout Jesus again at the count of three be ye lifted all ye ancient doors one two three let them go in the name of Jesus release their destinies you have the covenant keeping God Hallelujah. These hands that I see tied in the realm of the spirit, many of you will feel physical fire on your hands. There will be a strange deliverance. That's why anything you do does not work. No matter if it's a business, it will fail. If it's a relationship, it will fail. Anything you lay your hands, there is a spirit that steals your joy. But right now, I challenge and I attack that spirit. Let the fire of God, right now at the count of three, separate you from that influence. One, two, three. Let them go now. Now, now, now. In the name of Jesus. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind Spirit of victory Cover us with your wings yeah. The yoke of bad luck, the yoke of bad luck, the yoke of bad luck, I break it now. The yoke of bad luck, receive, I'm breaking someone free from this yoke of bad luck. I break you free 
from the yoke of Bangkok in the name of Jesus. Bad luck. It works well for others until you come. And then something strange just happens. All those under the anointing here, I arrest this spirit and at the count of three, every devil you will patch your load and every trouble you have brought to this destiny and go. I speak as one sent by the anointing. At the count of three, leave one, two, three, go, go, go. Out of their lives, out of their destinies, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We're so glad to pray for the sick. Nada o kaka sunanka o bangi chika isaya na kwa sunanka o bangi chika nina nada o kaka sunanka o bangi chika isaya na kwa sunanka o bangi chika who is Janet? Janet, Janet, I hear a name Janet. Janet, there's, there's no time we have. Janet, please don't enjoy anybody. Are you Janet? Stand up. I had the name Janet. Please don't tell lies, don't embarrass yourself. If you are not Janet, go back. Janet. Where are you from? In the name of Jesus, look at me. I will pray for everybody, but I will pray for you. Huh? Look at me, look at me. Close your eyes. Your family is under serious attack. Huh? Where are they? Where are your family members? They are in Zaria. Zaria, yes. Go and tell them that the Lord is bringing deliverance for your entire Amen. family. Amen. Huh? Not only... Go and tell your family members that the Lord is taking away the reproach Amen. from your family Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I may not be able to talk to everyone, but I'm still seeing that thing I saw in the vision. That thing tied on the legs, written reproach, reproach, reproach. And the Lord is taking it away right now in the name of Jesus, taking away reproach. This lady, tap that lady holding her hands for me. This, lift your hands lift your hands just do what I'm asking you to do in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands I'm seeing like oil come upon you and God is saying he's shifting you to a new level of favor in the name of Jesus I decree and I prophesy by the spirit over you 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 All of you standing here for time's sake I'm going to pray for you one of you um, the power of God is going to come on one of you the moment that happens I'll pray for everybody I'm seeing one person one of you the Lord is telling me that the anointing is coming on that person not only is God bringing personal spiritual revival to you God is opening doors of opportunity Lord where is that one person I decree and declare when that one person is identified and then I just pray for all of you in general I'm seeing someone in around the media where media people are and the Lord is saying you are stepping into your season of laughter and just around that vicinity of the media I stretch my hands may the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus like a mighty rushing wind rest upon the individuals within that vicinity in the name of Jesus, that person must enter into the, the reality of this prophecy. I'm back to you people in front. In Jesus' name, I decree and declare. 
whoever that one person is may that anointing and that grace come upon you you will never 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 be the same the power of god will come upon that one person the moment that happens then i'll pray for everybody it's just the instruction god is giving me in the name that is above all names i stretch my hands towards all of you by faith and in the spirit i declare for whatever reason it is that god brought you out here i declare i place the word of god upon your situation and in the name of jesus i declare that you return with testimonies in the name of jesus my dear look at me this lady wearing dark come god bless you you can go back to your seat all of you hold my hands hold it with both of your hands where are you coming from asaba. from asaba yes, the lord is saying i should tell you that this will be the beginning of your days of glory Amen. This will be the beginning of your days of glory. Step into it by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, you will never be the same. Never be the same. We raise your banner. We shine your light so ladies every spirit that appears to you in dreams sleeping with you in dreams and destroying your destiny anything good that is about i'm praying for everybody but i'm hearing ladies in my spirit to deliver ladies from this spirit good things are about to happen to you and then you have a dream and all kinds of spirits molest you and that's it i'm praying i'm seeing 23 there are more than this but particularly 23 people the lord is bringing strange deliverance for them right now wherever they are in the name of jesus may the fire of the holy spirit from inside this auditorium to the overflows outside online let there be complete emancipation for such people in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ my dear this lady wearing pink lift your hands Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. I'm seeing the Lord take something out of your body. We're about to pray for the sick. But the Lord is taking something out of your body. That's why I told you to shout that name. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the power of infirmity is broken over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, very quickly our time is gone we are going to be very very fast are we together um if you are trusting god listen carefully whether you are in overflow one overflow two overflow three if what you have please listen if what you have is a terminal disease a terminal disease is something that is akin to a death sentence are we together like a death sentence you know what i mean i don't have to mention names please whether you're in overflow one two three be fair be honest i will want to minister by myself to you now number two those in here you can come out and you're trusting god for healing for you or for your loved ones overflow one please to your projector stand overflow two same thing to your projector stand overflow three to your projector stand so if you do not belong to this category that i particularly requested to come please god is here make sure you are sincere make sure you are honest i like all of you to come stand i'm about to minister and there will be men and women of god scattered across those by the roadside i don't know what overflow that will be let's say an extension overflow four you will join overflow two and then there will be men of god ministering by the spirit please because of time you do not just a touch is enough we're functioning together under a corporate anointing so you don't have to particularly except if they have a personal prophetic word for you you don't have to just waylay them and harass them and say look this and that and that just stand by faith as soon as they pray for you you go back to your seat you check yourself you must return with your testimony if it's a medical report whatever it is i like you to just come believing hallelujah 
praise the lord in the name of jesus i decree and declare that together as a team under the anointing of the holy spirit overflow one overflow two overflow three and those online we agree that this touch becomes a touch that will birth your miracle and your testimony in the name of jesus in the name of jesus now as as we pray for you worship team please help us whilst we are doing that how many of you have your prayer requests you have your prayer request please wave it so while this is happening usher's pr department please join them uh, and then if, if if there's a need for that maybe the protocol department can help let's collate the prayer requests very quickly so that we can speak over it immediately we'll be very fast please um dear people of god let's be very fast as we minister to them so that we can um finish up on time blessed be the name of the lord for those of you standing here i want you to believe there is a god in heaven and that this touch becomes a supernatural touch doesn't matter what the situation is release your faith in jesus name god bless you um i'll just just stand on them because of time please if you are yet to submit your prayer request it's not a ritual you can wave it and an usher or someone will quickly please if you're under the anointing you can wave it or tell them where it is and they'll pick it for you please quickly quickly those online connect by faith stretch your hands here and let's pray father we decree and we declare we just have a minute for this in the name of jesus christ stretch your hands and prophesy libras kadabrando sharikatosia brother the same way we are standing on this request in the name of jesus this is establishing your dominion above every challenge above every situation in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus in the name of jesus we decree by the power of the holy spirit every impossible situation here we turn it around right now in the name of jesus we turn it around believe 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 we turn it around in the name of jesus we turn it around in the name of jesus we turn it around in the name of jesus we turn it around in the name of jesus this is a strategy that the lord delivered to us a representation of your pain your stress that which attempts to challenge god over your life no matter how many times we prophesy we are limited and this is an opportunity to have everyone it's like tabling your heart before god there is a god that answers prayers this is not a ritual that's why we bring it before him and let me tell you we have we have heard of marvelous testimonies from this and i believe that in this year of extraordinary fruitfulness that this that you have dropped here before the lord in the name of jesus as you have brought it before him it will never if it's a tragic situation it will never return to you again and if it is a request that must appear in your life then i decree and declare i don't know how it will happen like the prophet said you may not see wind you may not see rain yet the valley shall be filled with water i prophesy i decree and declare in the name that is above all names by the god of all grace your answer will find its way to your life even if it means happening through your enemy or happening through a man that has vowed not to help you may my god make it happen for you in the name of jesus christ and i prophesy to you that these egyptians you see today that you see them no more forever you see them no more forever you see them no more forever in the name of jesus christ for many of you even before this month is over in the name of jesus you will take your list one by one one by one one by one one by one in the name of jesus we decree it so by the power of the holy spirit we decree it so by the blood of the lamb we decree it so 
by the word of God we establish it it is done in the name of Jesus Christ let me pray for you now this will be um, the first time we are doing this in a miracle service for the year why do I round up the services with a prophetic word because I believe in the power of prophecy and it is also a spiritual mechanism to send the word to you wherever you are are we together now you don't have to be called as an individual the word of God comes is yours for you to receive and then you see the creative potentials in that word people's lives have changed some overnight just because a word came and now it's about to come again let me tell you do you know that I listen to the miracle service messages myself and I receive all the prayers from the man of God just because I'm the vessel being used by God does not exempt me from receiving too. I listen to the messages and God is my witness. I follow every prayer with all my heart sincerely. Are we together now? So believe this and you will see it work in your life. It is only what you believe that will work. Are we together? Favor like never before. In the name of Jesus beginning from this night may he follow you like a shadow follows a man i say it again favor like never before from tonight may he follow you in the name of jesus christ strange favor strange favor activating possibilities in your life strange favor in the name of jesus christ number two i decree and i declare by the power of the holy spirit every overdue issue in your life an issue that has stayed long beyond necessary in the name of jesus christ i declare that this is the season of strange settlement over your life may my god the god of all grace establish and settle you in every area in the name of jesus christ every long-standing issue comes to an end now everything that misrepresents you before your helpers the spirit that creates a bad image in the presence of those who can help and lift you there is such an operation of darkness that when men desire to help you something happens around your life in the name of jesus it comes to an end now in the name of jesus it comes to an end now i pray for you in in this season you need wisdom not sophia not the wisdom of men not the princes of this world but the wisdom that comes from above that is accompanied with mighty works it says i will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece that none of your adversary can gain say nor resist i decree and declare receive this strange order of wisdom receive this supernatural dimension of wisdom in the name of jesus christ the level of anointing that you must be upgraded to in this season so that the hand of God will be evident on your life I stretch my hands let there be a baptism of that anointing upon you now let there be a baptism of that anointing upon you now if you are in ministry let there be a baptism of that anointing now for every leader here let there be a baptism of that anointing now everyone due for promotion your place of work or your standing in for your your loved ones i decree and declare we announce and we establish their rising in the mighty name of jesus christ the spirit that continues to minister to you that you will die and that you will not see the end of this year you will die during election you will die during this and that a crisis will happen and you'll be a victim of this I silence the voice of that spirit now I 
I decree and declare whether by road whether by air whether through the operation of the wickedness in man remain ever exempted from death in the name of Jesus may you be too late for tragedy if it will cause shame you will not be found there if it will cause pain you will not be found there in the name of Jesus Christ I decree that whatever it is you're involved with whether it's your career the works of your hands your business whatever it is that God uses as a channel to increase your influence to bless people and to empower you in the name of Jesus may grace be multiplied upon it in the name of Jesus may grace be multiplied upon it in the name of Jesus may grace be multiplied upon it some of you at the beginning of the year your prayer life is already down it's too early your word life already down no appetite to study scripture no appetite to pray whether you sleep by eight o'clock or by ten you will still wake up by eight the next day this one is a spirit it's no longer tiredness anything you don't have control over has been hijacked over by satan god gives his beloved sleep it is true but slumber is of the devil there is a difference between slumber and sleep one of the differences is control there are some of us even if you sleep by two in the afternoon you will wake up by eight or nine the next day until good things finish before you wake up it's a spirit i curse it from your life now. you will go to bed when you want to and you will wake up when you need to in the name of jesus christ god has declared over us but let me declare again over our finances please i will continue to say this they prosper through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo I decree and declare this is the season that you step into overflow in the name of Jesus Christ no one connected to this grace no one connected to this vision goes down financially and I pray for you those of us who have little groups ministries fellowships that were helping and building other believers and for a long time you have seen that it's like your grace is pecked at a level nothing new nothing fresh i decree after this miracle service step into a new order of spiritual operation whatever needs to be restored in your life before february restoration restoration to bring back i command it to your life now in the name of jesus anywhere we are not praying for crisis during this election but in the name of jesus any pocket of reprisal or whatever that will arise by the finger of God may you be far from that environment may your children be far from that environment may your parents and your loved ones be far from that environment whatever it is that you have asked the Lord that I have not mentioned here but is a desperate desire in your heart I release my faith with you as touching the grace given unto me in the name of Jesus let it be turned to your testimony two more prayer points may the spiritual fire on your altar the fire that once called people to you the fire that was responsible for your honor the fire that was responsible for your influence whatever made that fire go down or blew it out in the name of jesus we find your coals back to flames
whatever has shot your appetite for knowledge you used to be a student of knowledge you buy books you are online learning and growing but for some reason whether carelessness complacency or just an attack now there is no appetite to know and to grow i declare that after this night may the grace that causes men to seek god and seek after truth may that grace be released upon you let me add one more prayer no matter where your loved ones are on this earth whether in this country or outside of this country within this continent or outside of this continent whether in health or not whether following this service or not we decree and declare may the hand the help and the favor of god locate them and even as you are receiving and celebrating testimonies may your loved ones have the same experience in the name of jesus christ thank you lord jesus blessed be the name of the lord wave your hands and give jesus praise father we glorify you we bless you thank you thank you thank you i'm walking in the reality of every prophetic word thank you i receive every grace I receive every word in the name of Jesus except if you're under the anointing I like us to honor in one minute we will always do this we're a ministry that believes in soul winning we believe in giving people an opportunity to meet Jesus and um, even though our time is gone necessity is laid upon us to give someone an opportunity to find God's saving grace tonight let's minimize distraction please and so for all those here sitting overflow one overflow two overflow three uh, the roadside those connecting online and those in the main auditorium you are here tonight and the Holy Spirit is ministering to you that you need to make this year different you need to give God an opportunity to start afresh with you could be that you have given your heart to the Lord but you need that assurance you truly need to rededicate your life to say Lord I'm handing over everything we have just a minute or two for you if you are sitting in overflow one two and the roadside and in here I would request you to come just stand in front here and then those at overflow three for the sake of time and distance i would request that you just walk to your projector stand and then those following online you can just follow me as i lead you through this prayer two minutes the lord is speaking to you please summon the courage arise let's encourage them make your way to the front god bless you those coming from outside please hurry up clear the way for them please god bless you god bless you there's nothing compulsory in the kingdom but the benefits are worth the while make your way quickly someone outside is saying apostle i want to come but i'm a bit ashamed there's nothing to be ashamed of make your way run to jesus if you're coming please come quickly there are contemplations happening in your spirit while you are sitting down you know you need to be here the devil will not ask you to be here the fact that there is a prompting to be here is a sign that the holy spirit is ministering to you win that war get up from your seat and come apostle what if my colleagues see me it's good they see you so that they become witnesses of your transformation make your way quickly we have just one more minute for you for those of you clapping in the name of jesus this is how many will honor you because you are committing yourself to encourage those who are coming to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. I understand that in the day and age that we live in, it takes a lot of courage to be very vocal on a decision like this. We live in a time where people pride themselves in being sarcastic. They pride themselves in laughing at others, especially when you are doing something spiritual. 
Jesus said whoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away I honor and I truly celebrate all of you for the courage to stand even in the presence of everyone may I request that you just lift your right hand as a sign of surrender and repeat this truthfully after me say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart and I believe in you that you are the son of God tonight I hand over my heart my mind my body my life to your lordship I declare that you are Lord of my life I declare that I exchange my life for your life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life the power of sin of Satan of the flesh is broken over my life now and forever amen keep your hands lifted Jesus thank you for these precious ones they have made a decision for many of them the first time for many of them securing their eternal destinies I decree and I declare that the grace that helps people to stand to thrive and to excel in this kingdom may that grace come upon you I open you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the word that is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified I plant in you tonight a fresh hunger and passion for the things of the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ and I declare I dissociate you from anything that can impede your spiritual growth may you enjoy the help of God in Jesus name I pray amen and amen thank you dear brothers and sisters let me request that you follow there's a lady waving her hands please all of you follow her in concert she will lead you to a committee that will welcome you more formally on our behalf is this the best you can do koinonia blessed be the name of the Lord hallelujah dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God our man of God Apostle Joshua Salmon and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus I'll see you again bye